Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Montgomery County Council. It is Tuesday, March 28th. We have a lot to get through tonight because we want to hear from, from all of you who are joining us. But before we get to the two bills that we will have public hearings on, I want to turn it over to Councilmember Ludke for a special announcement. Good evening, everyone. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to welcome the scouts from Troops 759 and 7592 from Ashton to our meeting. The scouts are over here and they are working on their citizenship in the community and communications merit badges, um, both of which have requirements that involve coming to the meeting tonight. And I am their merit badge counselor, and I swear I'll make them work for it. But, um, but no, I'm very happy to have them here and very proud of this group of young people. So thank you. Thank you. Democracy in Action, Scouts. You're witnessing it for yourself. Thank you, Councilmember Ludke. Um, uh, so this evening uh, is a public hearing on two bills. The first bill that we will be having a public hearing on is Bill 1523, Landlord-Tenant Relations Anti-Rent Gouging Protections. This bill would establish protections against rent increases above a threshold for certain rental units, set a base rental amount for certain rental units, provide exemptions from rental increase restrictions for certain units, pertain, uh, permit certain rental increases to fund capital improvements, require landlords to submit annual reports regarding rents, and generally amend county law concerning rents and landlord-tenant relations. A planning, housing, and parks committee work session is tentatively scheduled for June 15th. Those wishing to submit additional material for the council's consideration must do so before the close of business on June 8th. There are 26 speakers for this item, and I'm going to call up the first Five, uh, and that is Luke, Lukeman Safe, Crow Bolt, uh, Diane Griffin, Michael English, and Agapita Padilla. And while you are all making your way up, I want to turn it over to our colleague on the other side of the world, Councilmember Natalie Fani Gonzalez. Uh, good morning. I hope you you can hear me. We hear you. Yes. Uh, my name is Natalie Fani Gonzalez. I'm the chair of the Economic Development Committee, and I'm in beautiful Taipei, Taiwan, with the County Executive and the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation and a number of businesses. Uh, talking to them, uh, uh, talking to Asia companies about Montgomery County. That is why I cannot be there in person, but I promise you I'm committed that as soon as I'm back to the states, I'll be hearing the entire public hearing, uh, taking notes, especially uh, when as we're getting ready to work on improvements to, to the bill in June. Thank you so much for your time. Back to you, Council President Evan Glass. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, and safe travels. First speaker uh, of the evening is uh, uh, Mr. Safe. Uh, thank you all uh, for giving me a chance to express my, uh, my, my, my ideas about this. Uh, my name is Lukman Safe. I'm here uh, uh, on behalf of Afghan community in Silver Spring in the White Rock, uh, living in, in Eclair Apartments. Uh, and I'm here, uh, and, uh, we want to have the rent stabilization through the Home Act. Uh, and we are one, more than 150 families living in that area, and we are all fresh legal arrivals to this country. We have started everything from zero, and our life is only survival. So this is why we are supporting the uh, Home Home Act, which which have like the least the, the at least the three percent increase per the uh, rent uh, increases annually. Uh, our 
people uh, like we are living in that apartment and many people they are coming to me and every uh, time we are negotiating with the landlords and they are offering like a really big increase like from so 8% to 25% uh, that that's really hard for us to, to pay because uh, all of the uh, refugees they have only survival jobs it's always like um, 15 uh, dollars per hour and we are not able to pay that high rents so we, we, we this is also fine but not idle because we we, we are still under the government um, support and it's really difficult for, for us to to pay that the high rents so that's why uh, we are here to to support the home act and and have like the rent stabilization through that act thank you thank you very much sir It's going to be a long evening if we applaud after everybody. Uh, um, next up is Mr. Bolt. Hi, I am Crow Bolt. Hi, I am Crow Bolt, a Montgomery County resident in District 5 in Silver Spring and a student at Montgomery College in Tacoma Park campus. I am testifying on behalf of Young People for Progress, YPP, an organization that strives to create power among young adults through engaging in social issues that impact youth, especially BIPOC youth in our county. Our members range from parents from MCPS students to homeless or formerly homeless residents to students and young professionals. YPP strongly supports the HOME Act, Bill 1623, on of the two of the rent stabilization bills at hand. Only the HOME Act will ensure that young people maintain decent, affordable, and stable living conditions. I am unable to leave the residence I share with two people in order to live independently and focus on my career goals because of increasing rent prices. I would like to move, but our struggle to afford rent anywhere else in Montgomery County. Our situation is cramped, the water there is water damage in the ceiling, there is mold in the bathroom, and mold in the shower frequently gives me asthma attacks. I cannot afford to leave. It has made studying a struggle. Unfortunately, my circumstances are not unique. A lot of my classmates also cannot afford to live in a county with increasingly expensive rent increase. As Montgomery College students, we do not have high incomes. We are going to school part or full time. As a trans person, I know that young trans people are more at risk of housing insecurity, especially when we can't live with our family members. Transphobia in this country, and even in this county, has become increasingly violent. I know what it's like to have to change living situations quickly for safety reasons. Price increases means me and young people like me have to choose between living in unsafe situations or becoming homeless. The State Index on Youth Homelessness indicates that Maryland has low score regarding laws and policies related to preventing and addressing youth homelessness. And as True Colors United, a nonprofit focused on ending LGBT youth homelessness, underscores the alarming rate of youth homelessness and are even more dire among LGBT youth. Um, anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of youth experiencing homelessness identify as LGBTQ+ while only 7 to 10 percent of the general youth population identify as queer. Those are startling numbers. We are asking the council to pass rent stabilization with a cap of no higher than 3 percent because young people, college students, and LGBT young people deserve better than the fear of displacement, deserve better than the unaffordable rents with dangerous living conditions. Any cap higher than 3 percent would be too high for us to manage as we already struggle so much financially. We have hope and faith in the council that you will make the right decision for the future of Montgomery County. The future is in young people, in us. Please pass the bill that will let us stay here and grow. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Crow. <laughs> next, next is Diane Griffin. I'm not sure if Diane is here. Oh, hi, hi there. You're speaking on Diane's behalf? Okay. Yes, hello. I'll be speaking on Diane's behalf. Um, she wrote this. Dear members of the Montgomery County Council, my name is Diane Griffin and I am a resident of Westchester West Apartments on Hewitt Avenue. I am writing to express my support for the HOME Act, particularly for the rent stabilization provision that limits rent increases to 3% or less. As a 71-year-old retiree who has been unable to work due to COVID-19, I am struggling to make ends meet and pay my rent. I currently pay $1,300 per month in rent, and before the pandemic, my dad helped me pay for part of it. However, he fell and now needs his money for assisted living care, leaving me to pay the full amount. With only 
1244 per month from Social Security. I am unable to pay my rent and other basic expenses. Despite my efforts to secure a part-time job over the phone, the job market is tight and limited due to my age and health conditions. As a retiree on a fixed income of $1,244, there is essentially no rent increase I can reasonably afford, not 1%, 5%, or 10%. I need rent to be stabilized as low as possible. I'm not alone either. There are many seniors and people with disabilities in, in similar circumstances. After being behind on my rent for the first time during COVID-19 and facing potential ev eviction, I was forced to imagine what it would be like to lose my apartment and have to move. Depressingly, looking at the prices of other apartments in Montgomery County, I fear that I would need to pay a much higher rent than I am now. It would be impossible for me to afford. The stability that the HOME Act would provide to my apartment and other units if I were to move is crucial to me. I urge you to support the HOME Act and the rent stabilization provision that limits rent increases to 3% or less. This will provide stability for renters like me who are struggling to make ends meet, especially during these challenging times. Thank you for your time and consideration. Diane Griffin. Thank I just you. have one thing I want to add. I'm also looking to move soon. I'm looking to live on my own. I don't I don't think I'd be able to afford it on my salary and I work in Rockville. So, you know, I can work here but I can't live here. Thank you for your testimony. <laughs> Next is uh, Mr. English. Thank you. Um, thank you all for agreeing to hear my testimony. I'm Mike English speaking on my own behalf. Um, I'm essentially here testifying favorably with amendments to both bills and to urge a compromise. Um, I feel that a bill with a cap of CPI plus 4% with a 15 year exemption for new construction is the best pass forward, but none of us should be so rigid as to think our exact idea is the only one that'll work. I believe that we can and should provide more substantial protections than the CPI plus 8% outlined in the anti gouging bill, but think that the Home Act, with no indexing to inflation above a 3% cap, is not uh, flexible enough to adequately mitigate the real impacts rent stabilization has on housing supply. The outline process for exemptions of this cap is potentially helpful, but still casts uncertainty for development that requires banks to have enough confidence in a project to uh, give the loans to make the building happen. That said, while I truly think that the policy the county adopts has to be more moderate in order to properly balance those needs, the arguments presented by the Home Act sponsors and supporters, as we've heard a few already today, are centered on what at-risk tenants feel will be most helpful in keeping them stably housed, and that's important to keep in mind going forward. It's very hard to recreate that urgency when you don't feel it. Similarly, the authors of the anti-gouging bill are working in good faith to provide protections while also guarding against the risks presented by strict rem uh, risks presented by strict rent limitations on supply, and those risks are also real and can't be dismissed. While future adjustment may be technically possible, it won't be easy to do, so we need to try to get this right. The headline maximum rent increase and new building grace period aren't the only opportunities for compromise either. I urge the council to be creative. Maybe a higher CPI um, plus inflation number can work if there's an absolute cap that I can't go over no matter what level inflation is. Maybe some other measure I'm not thinking of can do that. but I. I urge you all to talk to the stakeholders, talk to each other, and find a path forward that balances the need for stability with the need for flexibility to make sure there's enough housing for everybody. I also know that there's some concern that a bill that caps rent at above the voluntary rent guidelines will cause landlords to raise rents by that permitted cap and not the voluntary guidelines as often happens now. I can't sit here and say that, that risk is zero, but over the long term, I think that, again, if there's enough housing for tenants to have leverage over landlords to compete, that should prevent from happening in most cases, um, and communicating the, the uh, rent guidelines and cap to landlords and renters at the same time could mitigate that. Um, but I do still think a compromise bill would be helpful, as it would provide a, provide a cap on the high end that simply doesn't exist now and percent, prevent some of these egregious rent increases. Uh, again, st stabilization does impact supply, but a lot of things do. Zoning, material costs, setbacks, lending practices, parking minimums, and so on. I say all this to say that if we lived in a world where we would have all the housing we need but for the impact of rent stabilization, I'd oppose it in all its forms, but it's not the world we live in. 
A home is the most important place in someone's life. They can uproot your entire life if you are pushed out of it due to dramatic rent increase. And if you're evicted, it can prompt you for years. Logic and economics have their place in this debate, but so does our obligation to help those who need a stable place to rest their head at night. And we really need to get this right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. English. Uh, next is Ms. Padilla, and I know that you'll be having a translator. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Agapita Padilla. Soy una inmigrante mexicana orgullosa que ha residido en Gilmore, en Glenmont, durante aproximadamente ocho años. Estoy aquí esta noche porque el alquiler es demasiado alto para nuestras comunidades. Good evening. My name is Agapita Padilla. I am a proud Mexican immigrant who has resided in Glenmont for about eight years. I am here this evening because the rent is too high for our communities. Si bien entiendo que esta noche se están discutiendo dos proyectos de ley destinados a limitar los alquileres de forma permanente, solo uno me permitiría jubilarme con estabilidad y previsibilidad. Well, I understand that two bills are being discussed this evening aimed at capping rents permanently. Only one would allow me to retire with stability and predictability. Y ese proyecto de ley sería el Home Act. And that bill will be the Home Act. Mi alquiler aumentó recientemente en un 6%, pero no encuentro eso justo. Cada año la renta continúa aumentando a nues y nuestros salarios permanecen estancados. My rent recently increased by 6%, but I don't find that just. Every year, the rent continues to increase and our wages stay stagnant. Las personas como yo, que dependemos de la seguridad social, no podemos seguir el ritmo por lo que nos vemos obligados a hacer recortes en otros lugares, como en las facturas de servicios públicos, ropa, alimentos y más. En mi caso, no solo estoy luchando para perman, perman, per, per, mantenerme al día con el alquiler, perdón, con el alquiler, sino que también estoy luchando con las facturas médicas de mi hijo que está discapacitado. People like myself who depend on social security cannot keep up, so we are forced to make cuts elsewhere, such as on utility bills, clothing, food, and more. In my case, not only am I struggling with keeping up with rent, but I am also struggling with my son's medical bills who is handicapped. El, el Home Act evitaría el desplazamiento automático para mi hijo y para mí. Como inmigrante y mujer de color, la idea de mudarme a otro lugar es estresante y desalentadora. The Home Act will prevent automatic displacement for my son and me. As an immigrant and a woman of color, the thought of moving elsewhere is stressful and disheartening. Todos merecemos pro prosperar y vivir nuestras vidas en este condado. Sin embargo, Ese objetivo se vuelve cada vez más distante para los residentes y las personas de color como yo cada año. We all deserve to thrive and live and live out our lives in this county. However, the goal is becoming more distant for residents and people of color like myself every year. Por eso les pido a todos ustedes que apoyen la ley de Home Act. Muchas gracias. That is why I urge all of you to support the Home Act. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for your testimony this evening. We're going to move on to the next panel. Gracias. Thank you. OK. Uh, next, the next five individuals, um, Cecile Millen, Christopher Kano, Lee Benswanger, Anna Laura Garcia and Steve Grossman. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Millen? My name is Cecil Millen. I am not actually here representing Housing Initiative Partnership, but I am actually here to represent the tenants with whom I work day in and day out. Um, I do tenant outreach and eviction prevention mm -hmm. in the landlord tenant court right across the street. Every Wednesday, there are as many as a thousand cases, many of which will eventually result in an eviction. So that's who I work for. But I want to know who you work for. And I know that if I were to ask you one on one, you'd probably say, well, I represent the constituents in Montgomery County and blah, 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 right? But I don't see how that can be true when half the county seems ready to jump in head first to support a bill that will actively make the lives of as many as 300,000 residents in this county harder. Let's look at the reality. Before the pandemic, the working class had record high levels of, sa of savings. Now it's record high levels of debt, okay? There's never been greater need for housing stabilization in this county than right now. So let's talk about who will be impacted. Who will be impacted the most? Will it be 150,000 already rent burdened citizens or will it be a handful of corporate property owners? Who's gonna bear the brunt of this burden? Before you answer that question yourself, I want you to consider your, your positions, right? Uh, according to the Pew Research Center, $156,000 is the cutoff for upper class. That is also coincidentally the amount that a Montgomery County council member makes as their salary. So you are considered upper class property owning members of this community. And when you consider whether you represent us, you need to consider the fact that you are supporting a bill that from down here, it looks like it's an attempt for the landowning elites to make the lives of us landless peasants just a little bit harder. That's how it looks. How much harder will it make our lives? If I had to guess, I would say 8% plus CPI. I think that's reasonable. It is for this reason that I challenge you to disregard the veiled threats in the testimonies at 1.30 of the star-spangled monopoly men in their $600 suits right and the shameless lick spittles brought in to defend their bosses the owners of these companies the ceos of these companies seven figure bonuses all right you need to recognize that the people in this room are the constituents and the rent is too damn high and y'all need to wake up and understand that no suit talking about the glories of a free market is going to change the fact that the rent is too damn high failure to vote against this bill will resent in will result in significantly more evictions, more trauma, and more homelessness in this county. It is an act of violence perpetrated by the wealthy against the poor, and if you vote for it, you will have allowed yourselves to become the conduit and the authors of that trauma. Don't vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mellon. Next, Mr. Kano. Mr. Kano. My name is Christopher Cano, um, the uh, political coordinator for SIU Local 500, and we'd like to thank the Montgomery County Council for working to pass rent stabilization. We know this is an important and complicated issue for all of us. With historical data showing that the average rent increases are less than 3%, we support capping annual rent increases at this rate. Hundreds of people are being displaced each month by rent increases of 5% or more. Our union members who work to keep our public schools running safely and efficiently should be able to continue to live and work in this county. SAU Local 500's goal is to ensure people who care for and educate our children have peace of mind and stability. However, according to our sister union, MCEA, over 60% of educators cannot afford life in Montgomery County. We believe housing to be a basic human right, no different than health care or an education. When families that are already struggling to pay for housing face potential rent increases, they have to decide between food, clothes, health care, or keeping a roof over their heads. Meaningful rent stabilization must be a key part of the long-term solutions for responsible growth and development in our beloved county. Of the two solutions put forward by this council, we believe only the HOME Act provides the predictability that allows both tenants and landlords to plan for a stable future. Adopting the HOME Act would provide an immediate tool to curb the county's current crisis of evictions, displacement, and homelessness. Furthermore, the HOME Act would create a new source of income for Montgomery County to create the affordable housing we all know we need by establishing a vacancy tax to disincentivize landlords from keeping units empty while also funding more housing. 
Families with children facing housing insecurity are most affected in their growth and their learning. Put the children over the profits of a select few. Thank, thank you, Mr. Kano. <laughs> Mr. Benslinger. Good evening, County Council members, Council President Glass, and community members in attendance today. My name is Lee Benslinger, and I am an AP government teacher at Seneca Valley High School. I've been a teacher for MCPS for six years. Before this, I worked in sales and finance after a stint in the U.S. Army. I am also a product of MCPS and a lifelong resident of Montgomery County. I'm here to speak on behalf of MCEA members to oppose this bill, 1523. A rental increase of greater than 8% annually is not sustainable for our diverse community, and the exclusions proposed, including but not limited to, units under 15 years old, single family homes, and individually owned condominiums would exclude a large percentage of properties, allowing landlords to increase rent by as much as they believe they can get for their property. Teachers in Montgomery County earn 20% less than similarly credentialed and educated professionals. It is often referred to as the teaching penalty, but that does not tell the whole story of how underpaid teachers are in Montgomery County. We have been told that the 3.35% pay raise given to educators in December was the largest in 10 years. This says more about the inadequacy of the previous raises than about how magnanimous this latest one was. Not only did it not keep up with the cost of living, but it also was significantly below what neighboring counties offer. Since the 2019-2020 school year, all neighboring counties have raised their lowest salaries by up by almost 10 percent. By comparison, MCPS has only raised theirs by 3.5 percent. We find it unfathomable that uh, that elected in one of the that those elected in one of the richest counties in the state lack the courage and the spine to take care of the backbone of our education system. If all counties have the same minimum starting salary, and by 2026 they are required to. It would be more financially attractive to live and work in a county where a lower cost of living, such as Carroll or Frederick counties, where many MCPS teachers already live. MCPS is fourth in the state for base starting salary, despite having the large, highest cost of living. Over 6,000 MCEA members live in other counties. Recent studies place Montgomery County as having a cost of living index of 45% higher than the national average. This is countywide average. It may be higher or lower depending on where you live. This increases expenses when they live outside of the county in other areas as it takes longer to get to work, depriving teachers of time with their families, wear and tear on vehicles, and more significant expenses when gas prices increase. Allow me to put a personal perspective on what this proposal will do. Using my current rent of $2,255, which is actually below the county average, for a two-bedroom apartment in Germantown and using the industry standard of 3.5 times monthly income for qualification purposes, a resident would need to make $7,893 a month to qualify. If you're trying to do the math, they need to make $94,710 per year. My rent went up 11% for this two-year renewal. I can only afford to live in my current home because I receive a 90% disability payment from the Veterans Administration. If the current proposal of an 8% Rent cap plus CPI is adopted, my rent could have gone up by 14.5%. By 2025, I would have had to have earned 127205 a year. And I see my time is up. I'm sorry. I'll Thanks. submit this. Thank you very much, Mr. Benswanger. You can share that with us. <laughs> Next is Ms. Garcia. Buenas tardes. Estoy aquí en contra del proyecto de ley 1523 a favor del proyecto de ley de 1623 de ley de la vivienda. Good evening. I am here against the bill proposed. Estimados concejales del condado de Montgomery. Dear Montgomery County Council. Mi nombre es Ana Laura García y he sido residente de Germantown durante 20 años. Estoy aquí esta noche para expresar mi decepción con el proyecto de ley contra el aumento de las rentas que permite a los propietarios aumentar la renta hasta un 8% o más, el índice de eh, precios de consumidor. My name is Ana Laura García and I have been a Germantown resident for 20 plus years. I am here this evening to express my disappointment with the proposed anti-rent gouging bill allowing landlords to increase the rent by up to 8% plus consumer price index. 
Es desalentador ver a los intereses de los propietarios que se interponen a los trabajadores, inquilinos que contribuyen a la estructura de nuestra comunidad. It is disheartening to see that the interests of landlords are being put ahead of those of hardworking tenants who contribute to the fabric of our community. Como alguien que ha luchado para llegar a fin del mes de esta comunidad, se le ha permitido los desafíos que enfrentan muchos familiares inmigrantes al encontrar viviendas accesibles. Desafortunadamente, el alto costo de la renta en en el condado de Montgomery ya nos ha dificultado a muchos de nosotros por las necesidades de la vida de alimento, ropa, atención médica. As someone who has struggled to, men, to make ends meet in this community, I know firsthand the challenges many immigrant families face when finding affordable housing. Unfortunately, the high cost of rent in Montgomery County has already made it difficult for many of us to afford the necessities of life, such as food, clothing, and health care. La falta de aportes de la comunidad para estos proyectos de ley contra el aumento de las rentas es aún más desalentadores. Es inca, in, inaceptable y vergonzoso que un proyecto de ley que tendrá un impacto significativo en nuestras vidas se apruebe sin aportes previos y consider, considerando las necesidades de la comunidad. The lack of community input for this anti-rent gouging bill is even more disheartening. It is unacceptable and embarrassing that a bill that will significantly Im impact our lives is being pushed through without prior input in considering the community's needs. Yo quiero decirle a los concejales que su posición es escuchar al pueblo. I want to, I want the council members to know that your responsibility is to listen to the voice of our community. No es escuchar a la gente rica para que les lave el cerebro y les diga a ustedes que aumenten el interés para las viviendas porque la economía todavía no se ha levantado. Your responsibility is not to listen to the well, to wealthy residents who will benefit from this initiative. Y como tengo pocos minutos, yo les quiero decir, ustedes quieren ser lo, lo mismo que California, que, eh, que aquí en, en alrededor hay más casas de campaña, es lo que quieren ustedes, recapaciten, por favor bajen el, 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 el aumento. Do you all want Montgomery County to become what has happened in California? Please do not let this happen. Y quiero decirles que no nomás en California. Aquí a media hora en Washington también está sucediendo lo mismo. Hay casitas de campaña donde la gente no puede pagar la renta. ¿Por qué? Porque ustedes no están haciendo su trabajo como debe de ser. If this is not only happening in California, it's happening here outside of Montgomery County of people who cannot pay their rent. Y quiero decirles a, a, a todos ustedes, yo sé que no, no todos son iguales, pero muchos de, de, los, de, de los concejales, al menos una de ellas nos ha traicionado. ¿Por qué? Porque ella dijo que nos iban a apoyar y no nos apoyaron con este problema de, de la casa y de la renta. Así que queremos una decisión sabia de ustedes. Eso es todo. Y buenas noches. We want a wise decision from you all, and I'm not referring to all of you. I am refer referring to one person who has betrayed us. Okay. Thank you. Is thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, is Mr. Grossman here, Steve Grossman? Okay, Mr. Grossman is not here. Thank you all for your testimony this evening. The next next five individuals I'd like to call up: uh, Harold Hill, Mary Reardon, Yasmin Masahi. Uh, Samir Alray and Aaron Droller.
You can sit wherever you'd like. And we'll begin with Mr. Hill. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Harold Hill, and I uh, personally walk the halls with and the streets with quite a few of you uh, city council members. Why? Because I believed in you, and these people do too. Now, I'm a uh, Burtonsville renter. Uh, I'm a single father, and I have two little ones of my own. I'm, I fall. I had the privilege to walk and uh, knock at the doors at a lot of residents for uh, in, inside Montgomery County under the privilege of everyday canvassing and impact Silver Spring. At the beginning of COVID, I lost my job. Not only did I lose my job, I lost my daughter, and I almost lost hope. Uh, this resulted and me getting evicted multiple times, multiple times. Notes at my door. Couldn't pay my rent. I think everyone felt that. Everyone, if not someone, lost someone in their family. Eventually, the judge ruled that I was evicted, uh, uh, was to be evicted. But thankfully, you know, I, I uh, the county had paid my security deposit and uh, three months rent. But not everybody is award, was awarded that. Some people abandoned their homes. And a lot of people, as I knocked at the door and I feed a lot of uh, 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 family members on the street, right now to the day, are being evicted. And it's heart wrenching to see people clothing, kids' clothing, furniture, sitting out on the curb. My, my experience also is that when you raise the rent on people that are suffering, going through all types of hardship, like I did, it's a slap in the face when you Look at these people's conditions, the damages that they're going through. No plumbing, mold, uh, mice, roaches. You can't even have company over there. <laughs> the roaches just sits out there. On you. It's, it's, it's just a slap in the face to raise someone's rent and then turn around and evict them. Mr. Hill, yes. your time has expired, but if you want to send us your testimony so that we That's have fine. it on the record. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Reardon. Reardon. Good evening, council members and staff. My name is Mary Reardon. I live in Silver Spring and I'm a longtime civic activist. I'm on the board of Montgomery Preservation, but I'm representing myself here. I'm speaking in support of the HOME Act and therefore against the anti-gouging bill. For most of my adult life, I was a renter and I've organized tenants in several rental communities. I know how it feels to be on the edge of displacement. Everyone deserves security in their home. It's unconscionable that many or any of our fellow county residents live in fear that a steep rise in rent could force them to leave their homes. The so-called anti-gouging legislation would essentially confer legislative blessing on landlords to raise rents beyond affordability for many households. Other speakers have effectively made the case that an 8% increase, even before adding the inflation rate, would be a hardship for many, for many families. I submit that this bill could be worse than no bill at all, and it's disappointing, actually astounding, that any of our elected representatives will consider supporting it. 
The Home Act, on the other hand, takes an approach that is decades overdue. The bill is reasonable and fair to both tenants and landlords. Its 3% annual cap would provide permanent, meaningful protection to tenants. Its provision for landlords to exceed that rate in a given year based on income and expenses would allow landlords to make a fair return and maintain their buildings. I very much hope that the capital improvements, maintenance, and repair costs taken into account for a fair return would not include adding amenities to attract higher income renters. And I suggest that when legitimate landlord expenses lead to a higher rent cap, the county would provide rental assistance to tenants with difficulty me meeting the increase. Going forward, the county projects a need to build thousands of housing units to accommodate a rising population. The call for more housing is frequent and often strident. But if all that new housing includes little or no accommodation for moderate and lower income tenants, what kind of community will we have? Moreover, it's crucial to preserve the existing affordable housing stock. The Home Act will help, but the owners of affordable housing, such as older garden apartments, should have access to additional county financial incentives to maintain their buildings as well as their affordable rents. I also encourage the council to explore opportunities to repurpose various existing buildings for conversion to affordable housing. Our county has waited far too long for legislation like the Home Act, which is well thought out and fair to both tenants and landlords. Now more than ever, tenants need an effective bulwark against rent hikes that could mean displacement. The Home Act answers this critical, urgent need. The anti-gouging bill does not. I strongly urge council members to vote to enact the Home Act. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to first thank you for allowing me the time to speak here tonight. Uh, my name is Yasi Masahi and I'm a resident of Montgomery County. I'm pleased to see measures being taken to address affordable housing. It is important to implement measures um, that address affordability issues without dampening the supply of housing. The solution to affordability is to increase supply in order to create an equilibrium between supply and demand. I fully support an anti-gadging legislation, but I'm very concerned with the terms of the legislation that would equate to rent control, which is detrimental to the housing supply and would cause a significant crisis for both the current and future renter population. It is important to protect families from bad actors that are exploiting our residents. Uh, we need legislation that achieves meaningful anti-gadging protection without crippling county's long-term economic health. The expansion of affordable housing and helping those rent challenge is our collective responsibility and should not be imposed to one group as it would deter them from our county and cause damaging effects, which is particularly critical in a region where capital flows between Northern Virginia, DC and Maryland, aligned to subregion where the risk of return uh, is the lowest. Naturally, regulation is a key factor in evaluating risk. I would like to ask the county to continue to support and expand the tools in place, such as increasing the rental assistance program, which would assist severely cost burdened families in critical and immediate need. In addition, create an affordable housing fund for nonprofits and preserve this existing affordable housing through the use of the county's right of first offer, which will be the most efficient means of increasing our stock of affordable housing, as well as levels of affordability. Provide homeowner access by funding to increase homeownership in historically underserved communities and those most at risk of losing their homes to further expand and preserve the ability to own a home. I ask you to support the 1523 bill with necessary technical modifications that would provide meaningful anti-gouging protection without deterring its expansion of our county's supply, which is an essential element for affordability. I hope you take this into consideration and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Next, Mr. Alray. Correct. Good evening, council members. My name is Samir Ryan. I'm the property manager for Solaire 8200 Dixon, a 27-story, 404-unit project which developed in October 2022 in downtown Silver Spring. I have 18 years of experience working in residential and commercial real estate management. I work for Washington Property Companies, a Montgomery County-based, family-owned business employing 72 people, the majority of whom are minorities. In the past 10 years, WPC has developed 1,400 units, including 180 MPDUs in Montgomery County, 1,040 units in downtown Silver Spring, and serves ethnic, ethnically diverse communities. I represent the frontline workers' perspective for rental communities, both in leasing and operations. My time is short, so I only want to point out a few topics. First. Communities are still recovering from the effects of COVID. 
Current delinquency in our properties can exceed 10 times normal rate, and the court system has yet caught up with the resulting backlog of rent cases, so many tenants have been living for months in their units without paying rent. The reduction in income is exacerbated by the additional time and money spent addressing it. Delinquency at Solaire 8250 Georgia Avenue, where I worked in 2021, totaled $1.5 million. Normal is 150,000, so 10 times more delinquency. We are still today working through court evictions dating back to August 2022. Second, rent increases at our building are only a result of increased cost of operations. The cost of retaining staff, managing utility rate increases, and keeping these properties running continues to increase, regardless of caps imposed by the county. Rent increases are not a given, but operations, energy, and expense increases are. <clears throat> we must compete in the market to increase rents. This is what I do every day, which requires a keen eye and understanding of our submarkets and ever-changing trends. For every unit with a positive trade up, I usually have a unit that remains at its same or current rate. As for rent gouging, I've never seen rent gouging in the Silver Spring market. Third, Bill CB-7, which caps rent increases at 3%, is based on a 1970s policy that has data-driven negative supply impacts, especially in challenging minority communities like Silver Spring. Here in Montgomery County, we have seen how negative rent control can impact a community. Take Tacoma Park, for example, which has not delivered any new housing since the 1970s, driving younger renters to other areas in search of newer and more modern housing communities. Such programs as the MPDU program, however, have shown to effectively stabilize rent, encourage diversity, and allow equal housing for all levels. Montgomery County needs more housing. Legislation should support the needs of the county Thank you for giving me, a person on the front lines, the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Please, please, we can all disagree without being disagreeable. Please, we have a long night ahead of us. Uh, finally on this panel, Mr. Joller. Uh, good evening, Council President Glass and members of the Montgomery County Council. My name is Aaron Joller and I'm a resident of Silver Spring. Thank you for the opportunity to submit testimony on Bills 1523 and 1623. I testified to tonight in opposition to both bills insofar as they propose any form of price controls on the Montgomery County housing market. I want to state at the outset that I am not a landlord, renter, or home builder, so I have no immediate financial stake in this legislation. We all share the goal to deliver affordable housing in this county to a diverse range of socioeconomic backgrounds and I know that every person on this council is operating in good faith to meet that goal. However, the bills as written will have the precise opposite of the intended effect and will ultimately will result in increased housing prices, lower housing supply, a deterioration of existing housing stock, and accelerated displacement of middle and working class residents from this county. At their core, these bills impose government-mandated price ceilings. The history of price ceilings is highly fraught, and this council should be deeply skeptical going down this road. Rent control is a blunt, ineffective instrument at solving the affordable housing crisis. To be sure, a group of renters who manage to get in on the ground floor will temporarily benefit from rent control. The costs of that benefit, however, will be borne by all Montgomery County residents and future residents. Economists across the political spectrum agree that rent control nearly universally results in higher housing prices, lower housing stock, and eventually increased displacement. Study after study has shown these results. Real world examples such as New York, San Francisco, Boston, and Tacoma Park have shown how rent control exacerbates the fundamental imbalance between housing supply and demand by disincentivizing construction. St. Paul, Minnesota recently attempted a similar 3% cap to the one being contemplated and were quickly forced to backtrack when confronted with reality. The laws of economics apply in Montgomery County and no amount of tinkering will somehow evade those unintended consequences. I would also be remiss if I did not add that it is incongruent that the county executive has proposed a drastic property tax increase that will significantly increase housing costs while at the same time supporting rent control. 
We live in a highly competitive, geographically integrated region. Home builders will simply take their business to Northern Virginia or Frederick and Howard counties. Middle class and working class Montgomery County residents will follow them there. Please reject these bills. Uh, I've provided uh, links to numerous studies that I hope you also consider reviewing. Thank you for your time and for your service to Montgomery County. Thank you, Mr. Droller. Thank you to all five of you for providing your testimony this evening. Come on. Come on, people. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite five more, uh, four more people uh, up. Rafael Lanqueo, Edward Fishman, Rosa Begazzo, and Alex Fitz. Okay, we'll begin with Mr. Lanqueo. Muy buenas noches, concejales. Mi nombre es Rafael Lacayo. Soy residente del condado de Montgomery desde hace 20 años. Actualmente resido en Rockville. Soy indocumentado y soy un trabajador esencial. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Council Members. My name is Rafael Lacayo. I am a Montgomery County resident of 20 years. I currently reside in, Mon in Rockville. I am undocumented and I am an essential worker. Esta noche me presento ante ustedes para expresar mi oposición al proyecto de ley para, desarro para desarrolladores Proyecto 1523 y apoyo la ley on hack que traería un cambio significativo a comunidades como la mía. This evening I stand before you to voice my opposition against the developer dream bill, Bill 1523, and support the Home Act that will bring meaningful change to communities like mine. Gracias a la estabilización de renta de emergencia que tuvo vigente durante casi dos años y medio, encontré la estabilidad dentro de este condado por una vez. No saben cuánto significa eso para mí como trabajador esencial. Sin embargo, me tomó, me temo que me veré obligado a mudarme a otro lugar sin protección. Thanks to the emergency rent stabilization that was placed for nearly two and a half years, I found stability within this county for once. You don't know how much that means to me as an essential worker. However, I, fe I fear I will be forced to move elsewhere without the protection. Mi arrendador ya me ha advertido de un aumento potencial de más del 8%. Le pido su oposición al proyecto de ley 1523 porque es absurdo permitir legalmente que los dueños de barrios marginales aumenten los alquileres tanto. Uno de sus mayores temores es que un proyecto de ley sin, sin, significativo de estabilización de alquileres detenga el desarrollo. My landlord has already warned me of a potential increase of more than 8%. I am asking for your opposition to Bill 1523 because legally allowing slum lords to raise rents that high is absurd. One of your biggest fears is that a meaningful rent stabilization bill will stunt development. Odiaría decirlo, pero nuestras comunidades de inmigrantes y de bajos ingresos no, están no se están beneficiando de la mayoría de los nuevos desarrollos privados construidos en la última década. Ni siquiera nos beneficiamos de un programa como el MPDU. I hate to break it to you, but our immigrant and low income communities are not benefiting from most of any new private development built in the last decade. We don't even benefit from a program such as the MPDU. Si no me creen, lo único que deben hacer es ir a nuestros barrios como el mío y tocar algunas puertas. La idea de que debemos elegir entre nuevos desarrollos y proteger a las comunidades vulnerables es desalentadora. Sin embargo, en uno de los condados más ricos del mundo, deberíamos poder hacer ambas cosas. 
If you don't believe me, all you must do is go into neighborhoods like mine and knock on a few doors. The notion that we must choose between new development and protecting vulnerable communities is disheartening. Yet, in one of the wealthiest counties in the world, we should be able to do both. Lo insto a que reconsideren este proyecto de ley y consideren su impacto en los inquilinos del condado de Montgomery. En lugar de priorizar los intereses de los propietarios corporativos, debemos concentrarnos en encontrar soluciones significativas para hacer que las viviendas sean más accesibles y accesibles para nuestros residentes más vulnerables. I urge you to consider this bill and consider its impact on Montgomery County tenants. Instead of prioritizing the interests of corporate landlords, we need to focus on finding meaningful solutions to make housing more affordable and accessible for our most vulnerable residents. Imploro a los patrocinadores de los seis proyectos de ley que den un paso atrás y participen en un proceso más inclusivo y transparente que beneficiará a todos los miembros de la comunidad. En cambio, los invito a todos a participar en la discusión y el proyecto significativo que es la ley del hogar ya establecido. Muchas gracias por su tiempo. I implore the six bill sponsors to step back and engage in a more inclusive and transparent process that will benefit all community members. I instead invite all of you to engage in the discussion and meaningful process that the Home Act has already laid out. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, Mr. Fishman, you have three minutes. Thank you, President Glass. Good evening, Council Members. My name is Edward Fishman. I'm a resident of Council District 1. I'm a longtime renter here in Montgomery County. Since 2016, I've been in the leadership of Our Revolution Montgomery County. Our 300-plus active members are focused on electing advocates for a progressive agenda. As noted in our statement in favor of the HOME Act, Bill 1623, we have backed candidates committed to progress on addressing the housing affordability crisis, including support for enacting some form of rent stabilization. Finally, we stand on the precipice of realizing this goal, that we are now at long last having this discussion in this place speaks to the incredible urgency of the matter. A dozen years ago, this council led on finally raising the minimum wage. You brought other new neighboring met metropolitan governments along, but on the, rent excuse me, on the rent stabilization issue, Montgomery County is lagging. This is driving many of our residents out of the county to find predictable, stable rents. We are excited that nearly all the members have signed on to the idea of enacting some level of rent stabilization, but the two bills differ significantly on whose interests they put first. Your votes will define where the council comes down on this issue for the foreseeable future. Bill 1523 has some good elements promoting home ownership, but on key provisions, the bill answers to the voices of investors, landlords, and developers who unsurprisingly want few limits on their profit seeking. Ultimately, it undercuts the efforts to realize meaningful rent stabilization for renters across the county. In contrast, Bill 1623 supports working families and residents who are not among the upper reaches economically. It would align us with rent stabilization rules in D.C. and those recently enacted in Prince George's County. Passage of the Home Act would signal that we value all members of our community, including lower income residents. We do not want them forced to move out of our county. Bill 1523 needlessly includes a 15-year exception from any rental high price hike limits for new construction, which is far longer than what's provided in D.C. or Prince George's County. The legislation, therefore, blesses countywide gentrification and excessive profit-seeking by developers at the expense of renters. Perhaps more controversially, it divorces the idea of limits on proposed rent hikes from actual market costs. Allowing automatic rent increases of 8% above inflation index levels just blesses price gouging. The idea that rent regulation has stopped construction in Tacoma Park is belied by developers in constant battles to build there, as council member Stewart could well attest. Instead of leading by leaning in to protect renters, this bill leans in exclusively to the concerns of developers and landlords who seek pr protection from progressive activism. Do not put their highest financial ambitions ahead of renters' needs by re rejecting the truly meaningful rent stabilization embodied in Bill 1623. 1523 is in inimical to the interests of residents of renters. 
The Home Act Bill 1623 must be the starting point of any serious conversation and consideration of rent stabilization in the midst of the current affordability crisis. We urge passage of Bill 1623, but we would also embrace a serious conversation on how to make the bill stronger and more practicable addressing the real concerns of both renters and non-resident property owners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fishman. <laughs> Ms. Picasso. Buenas noches a todos los presentes de Condado de Montgomery County Consul. Mi nombre es Rosa Vegaso, soy del Perú. Tengo 66 años y he vivido en el Condado de Montgomery durante 22 años. Soy residente de Aspen Hill, también tengo dos hijos a los que he podido mantener como limpiadora de casa. Good evening everyone. My name is Rosa Vegaso. I am from Peru. I am 66 years old and I have lived in Montgomery County for 22 years as an Aspen Hill resident. I, I also have two children that I have been able to provide for as a house cleaner. A lo largo de los, a los años, Una limitación médica en mis piernas ha dificultado mantener a mi familia. Desde la pandemia, mi capacidad de prosperar aquí en este condado ha sido imposible. Con muchos, como muchos, me atrasé en el pago del alquiler por enfermedad y poco trabajo. Over the years, a medical limitation in my legs has made it challenging to support my family. Since the pandemic, my ability to thrive here in the county has been impossible. Like many, I fell behind on rent due to sickness and little work. Gracias a Dios, pude solicitar la, asisten la asistencia del alquiler que me ayudó a recuperarme. Sin embargo, con un aumento de alquiler del 7% del año pasado y otro que se avecina en las próximas semanas, predecir la estabilidad de mi vivienda en el próximo año en un desafío. Thank God I could apply for rental assistance that helped me get back on my feet. However, with a 7% rent increase just last year and another one looming in the coming weeks, protecting my housing stability in the coming year is challenging. A medida que muchos, muchos residentes envejecen, mantenerse al día con los altos aumentos constantes de la renta es una lucha debido a los ingresos fijos y las capacidades físicas limitadas. As many residents age, keeping up with the constant high rent increases is a struggle due to fixed income and limited physical capabilities. Mi familia y yo merecemos previsibilidad y estabilidad en nuestras vidas, así que esta noche les pido su apoyo en Home Up. My family and I deserve predictability and stability in our lives. So this evening, I am asking for your support on the Home Act. Merecemos tener una vida y un futuro dignos aquí en el condado de Montgomery. El Home Act proporcionará, proporcionaría un aumento razonable y manejable con él que muchas familias inmigrantes y de bajos ingresos pueden sobrevivir. We deserve to have a dignified life in future right here in Montgomery County. The Home Act will provide a reasonable and manageable increase that many low-income and immigrant families can survive on. Por favor, apoyen la ley de Home Act. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. Please support the Home Act. Thank you. Have a good evening. <laughs> Mr. Fitz. Hello, my name is Alex Fitz and I'm a resident of Silver Spring and a constituent of Natalie Fanny Gonzalez. I'm here to speak on behalf of over 500 members of MoCo DSA. I would like to express our strong support for the Home Act while also urging you to reject the anti-rent gouging bill. Our members are all too familiar with the exorbitant rent increases that would still be allowed by the so-called anti-rent gouging bill, like Alex Banks who saw a 15% hike in his rent just this past year. Other members' continued residency in Montgomery County hinges on the exact cap that goes into law. One member, Tim, has already been displaced from Bethesda to PG County due to a 10% rent increase. Just hearing our members' individual situations give a sense of the precarity so many folks are experiencing right now. 
a member on a fixed income who worries about their ability to rent in Moco despite having roots in the area, a young person who can barely afford to rent a small apartment near their work in downtown Bethesda despite her and her partner having jobs and degrees. They did everything right, but still they are struggling. And finally, a parent who rents due to necessity and has only been able to stay in MoCo due to the luck and grace of a landlord who has not increased rent significantly. Being able to stay in MoCo should not come down to a single landlord's disposition. These horrible situations extend far beyond our own organization. MoCo DSA has spent the past three months knocking over 3,200 doors at the Blairs, Gateway, Cinnamon Run, and Yorkshire apartment complexes. Everywhere we went, we heard firsthand the devastating impact of rising rents on our communities. Folks have recalled losing countless neighbors whose rents were falsely raised, who did not speak English as their native tongue, who were ill-equipped to deal with the games that were being played by the management companies, and ultimately, they were forced to just leave. They had no other recourse. The Office of Legislative Oversight just released racial equity and social justice impact statements for both bills. Their analysis clearly states that the rent stabilization of Bill 1623 will not negatively impact new housing construction, while also outlining that Bill 1523 is not adequate, lacking any provisions that could help mitigate the displacement of tenants. Building more housing and keeping current residents housed is an, not an either-or proposition. We need to do both. The HOME Act addresses the issue of displacement, and its various provisions will accord with policies to increase supply. In contrast, the anti-rent gouging bill is a dangerous and misguided proposal. Looking at the data for the past three years, Bill 1523 would codify rent gouging by allowing annual rent increases, increases of up to nearly 15%. It is bewildering that one of the co-sponsors of Bill 1523, and my representative, Natalie Fanny Gonzalez, even agrees that this would be too high a cap, as she said in a recent March 2nd Washington Post article. And I quote, yes, there have been extreme cases of people getting 15 to 20% rent increases, and those are crazy, now, Fanny Gonzalez said. I want to focus on that and helping people in need. How is 1523 helping folks in need when it is just codifying those extreme cases of rent gouging? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for your testimony this evening. There are seven individuals who will be testifying virtually. And so we're now going to go to Mr. Bryant Folger. Uh, we can hear you if we can just boost it in here. Yep, there we go. Go uh, ahead, Mr. Folger. Class and members of the council, my name is Brian Folger. I'm the chairman of Folger Pratt. Uh, without getting into a lot of background, I can just tell you that we own and operate six uh, multifamily properties, apartment properties across Montgomery County, four in downtown Silver Spring, one in the I-270 corridor at Montrose Road, and one in North Bethesda. Um, all these properties would be rated uh, B plus to A. Um, we hear of rent gouging and we are disturbed by that rent gouging, those rent gouging reports. I can give you our own statistics. Our average monthly rent across our portfolio in Montgomery County in the spring of 2020 when COVID hit was about $1,875 per unit. After COVID hit, that average rent declined steadily uh, over the next year down to $1,675. Average rents in our portfolio did not get back to the spring 2020 levels until mid-2022. In that same time period, our operating expenses, payroll, utilities, real estate taxes, insurance, rose by an average of 21% across our, pro our, our portfolio. Then the cost to replace things like appliances and equipment and carpet and finishes uh, doubled in some cases. Now we've heard these anecdotes of 20, 30, 50 percent annual increases. This is clearly gouging and that is disturbing to us because we haven't seen any of those increases anywhere in our portfolio. We are upset that our industry is being tainted by a small number of greedy and bad acting landlords. We are in favor of the anti-gouging bills proposed by the six council members. Um, we also recognize that uh, within our county, like in every other jurisdiction in the U.S., there are people who are rent and utility challenged. Their needs must be addressed. You've heard from some of them tonight. The private and public sectors can and should be working together to find creative and effective ways to help these people. We applaud the increased funding that's called for in the, in the anti-gouging bill to help these people with their rent and their utilities. Um, we are 
we are mindful and respectful of the stewardship that we have in this county and the role that we play in providing housing for so many people. And uh, we are confident that working with the public sector, there are ways through financing, through cost savings, through real estate, real estate tax abatements that we can come up with a formula that will allow the county to create and maintain a stock of affordable housing for the people who need that kind of assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Folger. Uh, next, I'll invite Dean Hunter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. My name is Dean Hunter. I'm the CEO of the Small Multifamily Owners Association. We're a trade group uh, representing the interests of small rental property owners and managers in the region, D.C. Uh, and the Maryland suburbs. I'm here to testify uh, strongly in opposition to both of these measures. Uh, while they may be well intended, um, they will have serious adverse consequences. The first thing you got to understand, and I'm really surprised by the testimony here, uh, the majority of rental housing, about 40% of the rental housing in the county is provided by small landlords. These are people that rent out a house, a condo, a single family home. About half of the apartment buildings in the county are small C-class buildings owned by individuals and families. So while a significant proportion of the rental housing provided by small landlords, these bills and the testimony here today would regulate them all and treat everybody like they're publicly traded corporations or government agencies or the Trump company. We're dealing with private property. Small housing providers were devastated by the pandemic, the, the, the vacancies, the delinquencies. Uh, Montgomery County is one of the most in, uh, affluent counties in the country. This, these, these, this, these bills are both overly broad uh, they don't require financial qualification. They don't require proof that a tenant requested relief. This benefits the, wealth, the, the wealthy and the rich at the expense of small landlords. You're going to have government employees and people that make $150,000, some on the council, benefiting from these bans. It's untenable to hold uh, housing providers as the sole group to deal with to counter inflation. You know, gas is up, supplies is up, labor is up, property taxes up, utility costs are up, insurance is up. Grocery store prices are up. But the only business you want to regulate is housing providers. There's going to be adverse consequences for this. People are leaving the industry. The county executive has sent a request to this body for a 10% property tax increase. He wants to double the recording tax. But he supports limiting uh, rent increases to 3% based on some stories. Everybody has testified today about their rent being a problem. Probably has problems with utilities. Probably has problems with food and other things. We're not, we're not limiting the cost of increasing bills. You can't go in a restaurant and eat and not pay the price. This is absurd. We are absolutely against this arbitrary, unnecessary legislation that is only being presented because of some anecdotal stories and because of the organizational efforts of an international union and, and a nonprofit that's partially funded by the government. Let me say about equity, okay? You say about equity, the reality of the matter is you're driving out, small landlords are minorities, they're women, they're people of color. You have a disproportionate um, re uh, representative of those classes in the, in the small landlord space under like other commercial real estate. You're harming them. These bills don't harm the, 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 the big uh, uh, new properties, they harm people who have been in the business a long time and who are just getting in and have to deal with the old properties. Vote no against both of these measures. Thank you very much, Ms. Thank you very much, Mr. Hunter. Come on. Uh, next, I'd like to bring up Mary Kohler. Good evening. My name is Mary Kohler, and I'm testifying on behalf of Montgomery Housing Alliance. As you consider action to protect tenants, address cost burden, and prevent potential displacement, we urge you to include several first principles to ensure effectiveness and sustainability. As we stated in testimony last year, MHA supports efforts to prevent sudden extreme rent increases that amount to rent gouging. Most renter households cannot absorb double digit rent increases and should not have to face potential displacement or other dire choices simply for the excess profit of bad actors. In many cases, however, rather than being exploitative, modest increases are an important tool for landlords to meet increasing costs and adequately maintain their property. That being said, as you've heard tonight, many households cannot sustain even modest increases. 20,000 households in Montgomery County are severely cost burdened. These families already must make impossible choices between paying for housing and paying for other critical priorities like education, healthcare, and reliable transportation. 
and even necessary rent increases are untenable for them. It is therefore imperative that any measure to prevent severe rent inc increases includes targeted rental subsidies to support low-income households and that the scope of funding is adequate to meet need and is not a one-time investment but a sustained program. The Council must also carefully consider and work to minimize potential loopholes and unintended consequences, such as a cooling effect on long-term investment in the county or incentives for vacancy decontrol. Tenant protections against exploitative increases must be enacted in a way that does not drive development that would otherwise occur in Montgomery County to neighboring jurisdictions. It is also critical to ensure that landlords are not motivated to keep units vacant or to vacate occupied units through non-renewal, through lease non-renewal, -renew deferred maintenance, or even harassment in order to benefit from vacancy decontrol. We encourage you to also consider and account for potential disproportionate impacts on small landlords, as well as the appropriate model for program oversight and enforcement, and to provide significant resources for administration, including program infrastructure and tenant and landlord education. Additionally, we urge you to clarify language around included exemptions, particularly an exemption, an exemption for properties participating in affordable housing assistance programs. Language focused only on nonprofits may unintentionally exclude otherwise eligible properties that have alternative ownership structures. Lastly, we urge you to partner any action to restrict rent increases with robust investment in the HIF. Tenant protections and affordable housing development are both necessary tools to address the harmful effects of cost burden and the potential displacement of members of our community. As we increase the rate of available affordable homes, we will reduce the number of families who are vulnerable to the destabilization caused by severe rent increases. Thank you for the opportunity to provide input as you consider the matter. Thank you. Uh, next is Victoria Leonard. And Ms. Leonard is not online. Okay, next we'll go to Dr. Malkia Sapp. Good evening, council members. My name is Dr. Shanetta Malkia Sapp, and I am testifying today on the behalf of the PMs of the city, a property management firm that represents real estate professionals and small landlords in Montgomery County, owning or managing one to 50 units. To express our concerns regarding the rental regulations put forth in Bill 15-23 and Bill 16-23. Rental, re rental regulations like these are artificial efforts to overregulate a rental marketplace in Montgomery County that is already thriving and setting a good pace for itself aligned with the natural market practices. The false narrative that more than very few landlords may be rent gouging is a false one. In managing properties in the county for the last 20 plus years, the average rent increase for even larger management firms has been three to five percent. For our clients that own one to five units, these rental increases help with essential property needs. The new bills would increase hardship for small housing providers such as myself, access to affordable housing and economic and disability and equality that you're looking to create and sustain within the county. A majority of the natural affordable housing in the county is provided by small landlords. The Montgomery County Planning Development estimates that 25% of the rental housing in the county is provided by persons that rent out that single family home, townhouse and or condominium. About half of the apartment buildings in the county do have 20 units or less. These properties are owned by individual small businesses and this legislation would treat them such as larger corporations. The adoptions of these bills and or any legislations as proposed would result in a, de a decrease in affordable housing. Thousands of property owners would rather sell than to deal with the hardships and burdens of rental control and other laws that do not include the providers of the housing. With this in mind, we do understand that the council will look to pass one or two of these bills in the near future. Of these two bills, Bill 15-23 will ensure the bad actors in the industry will be regulated and allow Montgomery County to remain a place attractive and competitive for long-term property management investments. I would also be remiss if I did not offer our expertise as property managers and real estate professionals to remind our elected officials that we are always available to speak with you, to show you what's really happening on the ground in Montgomery County, so that there's transparency and practical legislation that can be adopted to improve the quality of life for all Montgomery County constituents and residents. Thank you for the opportunity to testify with you today. We look forward to having a seat at the table when proposals such as these are discussed with the council. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, next joining us is Catherine Lucas McKay. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Catherine Lucas McKay and I am a 10 year resident of Silver Spring. 
I am also the chair of the Silver Spring Citizens Advisory Board, which informs my understanding of renter experiences here now that I've become a homeowner, but I'm speaking purely as an individual tonight. I am pleased that the council is poised to enact rent stabilization this year. Our renters need and deserve this support. I know what it's like to struggle to pay the rent here. I missed the predictability that I had gotten from rent stabilization in DC when I first moved here. Um, I'm a homeowner now, but I was a homeless kid for a while, and I know how much this matters. Renters need stability in their lives, and we need to do better by them. So those are reasons that, you know, just from a community perspective, I think it's really important for us to pursue rent stabilization. Professionally, I research households' finances, which of course includes housing. Um, my 2020 work on eviction risk due to COVID-19 was cited by the CDC uh, in its eviction moratorium. I also recently worked with the National Association of Counties to create uh, an interactive tool with policy recommendations for every county, including ours. And I'm currently conducting research on mom and pop landlords that will be out later this summer. Rent stabilization's benefits include greater financial stability for renters, less displacement in growing neighborhoods, and more economically diverse communities. The latest econ research bears this out, contrary to earlier claims. The fact is, in 2021, renters here had to cope with median increases around 10%, and half were already cost burdened. Bill 1523 and the Home Act are both good starts, but neither is ready to pass. 1523 does not do enough to provide the flexibility, or I'm sorry, to provide the stability and predictability that renters need. The Home Act is not flexible enough to serve a county as large and diverse as ours, especially over the long term. It is essential to base allowable rent increases on <clears throat> the uh, consumer price index plus a margin. The reason for that is that the policy needs to work in all economic circumstances whether we're experiencing growth or recession or pandemic or natural disaster. It needs to work for small independent landlords who legitimately do have higher expenses than, uh, expenses than big corporate ones. And the allowable range needs to balance renters' needs for stability with landlords' legitimate rising costs over time. 1523 sets that rate far too high. The Home Act proposal is just too rigid. Uh, I recommend a compromise in between. CPI plus 4% with a max well below 10 would be good. Um, rent stabilization really needs to exempt new construction. I actually think that Council Member Joando's previous bills uh, had better approaches to that than either of these. Um, in conclusion, please take your time on this. It's super important. Uh, it needs to happen, but it needs to be done right. Thank you very much for your testimony. And the final person on this bill this evening will be Ellen Corrin. Good evening, President Glass and members of the County Council. My name is Ellen Corrin, and I'm speaking this evening as the Greater Bethesda Chamber of Commerce's Volunteer Economic Development Vice President. We strongly support Council Bill 1523 as an equitable approach to balancing the needs of renters to live in places they can afford, the needs of property owners to afford the increasingly high cost of operating and maintaining apartment buildings, and the need to dramatically increase our county's housing stock. To be sure, there are instances of bad actors in all aspects of life, and the property owner community is no exception. Thankfully, data shows that those instances are few, but even one instance is too many. It's certainly appropriate to enact protections. Of course, we can't just consider 1523 in a vacuum. It's not just about protecting tenants from rent gouging. It must also be about increasing government funding to help tenants cover their rental costs, as well as help people purchase their first home. To that end, we support increasing Montgomery County's rental assistance program funding and encourage the county executive to include funding $30 million in the budget. We support four and a half million in funding to help first time home buyers. And we should take a look at all of our assets. The county has a number of affordable housing programs in place. Let's study all of those programs to see where the county can most effectively help the largest number of residents in need. We must also examine how best to incentivize the production of all kinds of attainable housing. We must be careful not to provide incentives to build housing with one hand and enact disincentives with the other. Our members tell us that they're challenged in attracting investors for new housing. 
Potential investors are painfully aware of the county's efforts to limit a property owner's ability to recoup increasing costs. This can only work against our goal of growing housing stock. 1523 resolves that issue by exempting newer buildings from the 8% limit for the first 15 years. And let's keep in mind that the 8% limit is just that, a limit. Average rent increases are much lower than 8%. Today, council member Sales and Freetson introduced ETA 2302, which creates an expedited approval process for mixed use housing that provides a substantial percentage of affordable housing. Our chamber supports this type of approach and we encourage the council to examine even more creative approaches to addressing our housing shortage. For all of these reasons, the Greater Bethesda Chamber encourages the County Council to approve CB 1523. We'd also like to thank Council Member Fanny Gonzalez for introducing this legislation and wish her a safe trip home, as well as the five additional council members who signed on as co-sponsors. Thank you for allowing us to testify and for everything you do for Montgomery County. Thank you, Ms. Corn, and thank you everybody who testified on this piece of legislation. And with that, this public hearing is now closed. When I go on to public hearing on Bill 1623, Landlord-Tenant Relations Rent Stabilization, the Home Act. This bill would establish an annual maximum rent increase for rental housing in the county, provide exemptions for certain buildings from rent stabilization requirements, permit a landlord to submit a petition for a fair rent increase, establish an excise tax for vacant rental units, specify the use of certain tax revenues for the acquisition of affordable housing, and generally amend the county law concerning rent increase, landlord-tenant relations, and taxation. A Planning, Housing, and Parks Committee work session is tentatively scheduled for June 15th. Those wishing to submit additional testimony and materials for the Council's consideration must do so before the close of business on June 8th. We have 31 speakers on this item, so I'll invite the first five up to the table. Uh, Jennifer Martin, Naeem Alam, Nathan Feinberg, Tiffany Kelly, and Hossein Alam. And we will start with Ms. Martin. Well, thank you. Good evening, Montgomery County residents, Council President Glass, Council Vice President Friedson, and all members of the City of the County Council. Uh, I am Jennifer Martin, President of the Montgomery County Education Association, and I'm here this evening representing 14,000 members of the largest teachers union in the state of Maryland. So um, Montgomery County was once a place where people flocked to live and work. And over the past two decades, however, public sector wages have stagnated while the cost of living has risen substantially. Due to the high cost of housing here, we now have MCPS teachers commuting from as far away as Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Even more concerning, we now see scores of MCPS students living in motels and county shelters, or surfing from couch to couch. Fortunately, we've been presented with a chance to right these wrongs and start on a path back towards affordable housing for everyone in our community. Council members Juwando and Mink have introduced Home Act, which would cap rent increases at a rate that keeps pace with inflation. This legislation would ensure that renters can afford to live here, some in the only place they've ever called home, while property owners are still able to turn a healthy profit on their real estate. Council members have repeatedly said that you want to make it easier for county residents to afford to live here. Approving the Home Act offers the right approach. Communities are strong when people live where they work. Shorter commutes are an incentive for workers to retain their positions. It lessens environmental impacts and helps people to become more deeply invested in their school communities. Teachers better connect with students, 
when they can live in the same neighborhood. Students are best able to learn and grow when their families have safe and stable housing. The HOME Act lays out a way forward that works for everyone in our community. We call on the County Council to do the right thing for the renters of Montgomery County and pass the HOME Act to ensure that this district remains a welcoming home base for people at every income level. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Alam. Good evening. My name is Tiffany Kelly. Oh, Ms. Kelly, first we're going to go to Mr. Alam. I'm sorry, I thought I heard my It's name. okay. You're excited, uh, but you, there you go. You yield to Ms. Kelly. That's okay. Or not. My name is Naeem Alam. I'm from District 5, and I'm representing Sunrise Movement Silver Spring, a youth organization. We're here to demand that the County Council support Bill 1623, the Home Act, and reject Bill 1523. All of our members have been affected by rent increases one way or another, whether it is doubling up with family, or having to sacrifice their health care, or having to hop from house to house without any real sense of stability. So we know very well both the immediate financial damage and the permanent psychological damage that this instills for young people who often have no say over these sorts of issues. That's why we were filled with so much hope when we learned that Councilmember Kristen Mink and Councilmember Will Jawando were introducing the HOME Act in order to put an end to these absurd increases. However, we were disappointed to learn that seven of their colleagues thus far have failed to support the HOME Act, apparently due to dark money from a group of for-profit developers who call themselves Progressives for Progress. That's why we're now compelled to break our silence. If we had had 3% rent stabilization, then my family would never have doubled up. None of us would have ever lived in a basement. My friends would not have had to jump from house to house without any sense of stability. We would have never sacrificed our health care. But seven of our council members are currently choosing to deny us that, apparently because of dark money from for-profit developers who call themselves insultingly progressives for progress. So let us be clear. We need all members of council to vote in favor of the Home Act. We can't afford the 8% plus CPI rent increases of Bill 1523. We cannot afford to be creating more volatile households that destroy our lives and our childhoods and everything from then on. And certainly, we cannot afford to have seven of our council members more beholden to dark money from for-profit progressives for progress developers than they are to us. Currently, many of our members are too young to vote. But when all of you are up for re-election in 2026, all of us will be able to vote. I urge you to do the right thing now, or else we will have no choice but to vote you out. Please do the right thing. Support the Home Act, Bill 1623, and reject Bill 1523. I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Alam. Mr. Feinberg, good evening. Uh, turn on your microphone. There you go. Good evening. My name is Nathan Feinberg. I am a lifelong resident of Montgomery County and a high school math teacher that has taught in Montgomery County Public Schools for 15 years. Some of the council members here tonight may remember the story of when our family was evicted from our basement apartment by this county due to a negligent and illegally operating landlord. But I'm not here to rehash my story. With the help of many friends and by the grace of God, my family was able to make it through those troubling, troubling times and now own our own home. I'm not here to advocate for my own interest. I come to speak on behalf of the countless fa other families who face housing injustice every day and to fight for a day when no family is subject subjected to such preventable tragedies. Because make no mistake, this housing crisis is not an act of God. It is a policy choice. A choice that members of this council before us today have to make. The root cause is simple, cost. Formal, safe, and legal rental options are simply too expensive for many working families. This is what drives renters into the booming shadow market of illegal renters, while further impoverishing those who do manage to stay in legitimate rentals. It also is what drives the underreporting of safety issues at many lower end rentals, even in the formal market. To borrow a phrase, the rent is too damn high, period. That is the problem. And if we are worried about 
operating costs for landlords, let them show their receipts and prove that that is what is driving their increase before they increase. If we are worried about housing stock decreasing, let this council vote to approve social and public housing built directly by this county to fill the gap. Let us tax people who own 10, 20 homes, single family homes, and monopolize the housing stock, making it so difficult for people to become homeowners so they are compelled to sell and increase the stock. There are other solutions. In the work I have done organizing tenants in the greater Silver Spring area, I have seen how acute the problem is, how cost concerns drive safety issues. We have talked to renters experiencing a myriad of life safety issues from toxic mold to gas leaks that go, on, go ignored and unaddressed. And there is a common refrain that follows. Please don't report this to the county. I don't want to be evicted. I cannot afford to live anywhere else. It is critical that this body understand that unaffordability breeds desperation. And desperation drives renters to accept living conditions that are hazardous to their health. How many more housing-related tragedies must this county endure before we realize the driving force of our life safety issues is the affordability issue and the vulnerability which it inflicts upon families? In closing, I would like to highlight who we are talking about. We are talking about the people who care for and teach your children, who pick up your trash and clean your streets, the people who cook and prepare your food, who deliver your groceries and mow your lawn. So when the members here tonight and vote on these bills, I want you to think of these people. And if you and think this, can you look your child's teacher in the eye and tell them, I want to price you out of your community? Can you tell the sanitation worker, you can pick up my trash, but you can't live here amongst us? If you cannot, it is incumbent upon you to vote for this bill. If you can say those things, then God, may God have mercy on your souls. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Feinberg. Ms. Kelly, now it's your turn. Good evening, my name is Tiffany Kelly. I'm an economic equity and anti-poverty advocate here in Montgomery County. Um, and I don't have a formal speech, I just have some thoughts. The first thing I have to say is, I keep hearing the same thing over and over. We want stability. Stable people create stable communities. You cannot tell me you're concerned about children, educators, hunger, poverty, none of it. If you will not address the root cause of need in people's lives, most people in need are rent burden. So that's the first thing that I, that I want to say. The second thing is, for to the people saying that this affects landlords, it's going to do whatever this thing is it's going to do. Okay, I'm a landlord. I'm going to say that first. And I ain't hurting. And I don't raise my rent by a disproportionate number. I am reasonable in any request that I have made. And if this is going to affect you, if the Home Act is going to affect your profits as a landlord, maybe you're too broke to be a landlord and you probably shouldn't be one. <laughs> Not only that, my asset has doubled since I purchased it, so I ain't hurting. I'm going to win on the front end and on the back end. It's time for somebody else to win besides the people that always do win. That's what equity means. It means that we take power that has unjustly and unfairly been taken from a lot of people. We cannot pretend that we are concerned for people and we do things like this. We keep the same power structures in place year in and year out. Honey, keep your studies because the math ain't mathing and the help ain't helping and I am sick of it. I am sick of being in these streets trying to make sure people have their basic needs. So if you vote against this bill, thank you for making sure that people that do this work on their own time and their own time, like me, will continue to have to work. Thank you for making sure that nonprofit structures, that the, anti, that, that the poverty complex stays in place because that is what the opposing bill does. I don't want to see another food bank. Don't give me no more clothes. We need to be sure that people can be stable. That is the only way we can address so many things that we fund separately. Make sure people have what they need. Basically, I feel like you want an elite county. And this will be your way to legally say, get out of town. No. Period. And if the opposing bill is voted in Montgomery County, you in danger, girl. Period. Point blank. We got to do this thing differently. I'm tired. I am tired of fighting. And y'all should be tired of hearing my mouth. But until you stop taking my tax money and asking for my vote, I'm not going anywhere. And I will out-organize anybody because I am tired. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Uh, final, final speaker on this panel, Mr. Alam. Good evening. Uh, my name is Hussein Alam. I'm a District 5 resident and a small landlord. Uh, I'm testifying in support of Home Act 1623 and against Bill 1523. My wife and I have lived in Silver Spring for 22 years, and we also own another home in Prince George's County, which we rent to several tenants. Most of our tenants have lived there for eight years. They work at Walgreens and KFC, and one of them is a retiree. They almost pay the rent on time, except if there is an emergency, and in that case, we waive the late fee as an act of compassion. We have not raised the rent for five years, and during the last eight years, we have raised the rent only once after we renovated the kitchen and the bathrooms. Over the years, we have managed to have a fair and reasonable relationship with our tenants. We have convinced them to help us maintain the property by reporting potential repair in a timely manner. We also allow them to make small repairs and reimburse them accordingly. This relationship built on mutual trust and cooperation has evolved into a human relationship. To the extent that some tenants designate us as their emergency contacts. We have received calls from doctors updating us on the tenant's well-being, which is very important to us. We understand that tenants need a place to live, work, and have a good night's sleep. And we know that when tenants have stability in their lives, we as landlord also secure a reliable source of income to pay the mortgage, which is exactly what our experience has been. We do not need the rent increases that Bill 1523 would allow. The 3% cap in the Home Act is more than reasonable. It allows for exceptions for capital improvement. Landlord like us should have no problem with that. I believe the Home Act will lead to a win-win situation for both tenants and landlords, and I demand the Council pass the Home Act and reject Bill 50, 1523, and I know that only thing I can do is to go to the ballot box. And if you agree with me, I will support you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all for your testimony this, after, uh, this evening. Thank you all very much. Now I'd like to call on a Gibson Homan, Omadamolo Williams, Zoe Dooney, Tracy Esponiza, Espinoza, uh, and David Mott to come on down. Okay, we'll start with Gibson Homan. Good evening, President. Evan Glass, fellow councilmen and council members. I sit here tonight as an individual representing myself, but I also want to speak on behalf of a community of people who somehow or the other have escaped the reality of Bill 15 to 23. My story is very simple. I'm going to try and speak very quickly and very to the point, simply because it is necessary and time doesn't permit us to go very long. I come from the Southern African region, and there's a song that was written by a man called Paul Simon, and it went something to the effect that we are homeless. Homeless, moonlight sitting on the midnight plain. 
I'm sure some of you have heard that song. It's familiar to you. But there's another song that's written by another artist. And he said, Some people like to play with fire. Mm -hmm. Make believe it's water. Where am I going to with this? The reality of the situation is, I came into this community after be becoming a victim of a very terrible domestic violence situation. I had carrying with me my handicapped daughter. I was told this was the safest community to be in so that we could begin to restructure and rebuild our lives. But on entrance, there was a lot of opposition. But in my heart of hearts, I felt there is still hope for us here. And so we continued. Eventually, the DHS took us in after having spent a cold winter's period in the winter sleeping in a car. We then get placed in a shelter. Then we are presented with a situation where we are confronted with many other homeless residents singing the same song, we are homeless. But while we are in that transition, we're given access to an instrument that says it can help us to secure housing. But all the while in the background, we are confronted with another situation. While we're seeking with our case managers to find a place, the rental regime is escaping us. So that little bit of a stipend that you give to us to try and rebuild our lives is no longer powerful. It has lost its strength. But in the background, we have been haunted by the very system that's supposed to be protecting us and threatening us to get out of our shelter. At the same time, we have people that are disabled who have no voice to speak for them. But I take a look at something, because I get invited to a meeting and I, I move around, I listen, and I hear a bill, 1623. I ask myself, what is the 1623? I read it. I'm almost done. It is an instrument designed to help the homeless. It is an instrument designed to empower the powerless. It is also an instrument that will ensure that the helpless receive help. Please, you other seven that are still waiting to get it together, have some coffee, wake up, team up with the right people, and let's get on with the program. Thank you, Mr. Kirby. Thank you very much, Mr. Homer. Mr. Williams. Good evening, council members. Honorable Council Members. My name is Amadamola Williams. I'm a single father of two loving daughters who are in elementary school. I'm a proud resident of Gaithersburg, District 3. I know what's it like to lose everything. Um, I was in a shelter with my daughters. I was in a family shelter. I lost everything but my pride. I was able to get into a housing program, moving to Gaithersburg from Tacoma Park, hoping to start all over again, only to be stuck with a landlord, slumlord, that couldn't keep up with my, uh, the maintenance of my apartment. I, I had no dignity, mold, broken doors, uh, all types of, of nonsense that could easily be fixed. Only to add injury to insult, let's increase the rent. I have no control over that. I'm now working as a, as an organizer for the community, the Montgomery Racial Equity Network. Also, I'm president of Young People for Progress, based in Silver Spring. But what I want to tell you guys, <clears throat> There's no winning on both ends unless we pass 15, I mean, we pass um, 1623. We both win on 1623. Nobody's winning on, oh, only one person wins on 1523. We all know that. How does the, how does the residents benefit from that? We are in... 
California, we all are aware of Tent City. Tent City's in D.C. now. Tent City is growing in Tacoma Park. Everybody knows that. We don't want Tent City to be all over Montgomery County. People are losing their homes. We all know what happened with the, what, 200 people facing eviction every Wednesday in Rockville Courthouse? We, there's, a, there's so many methods to put a stop to this. This is one. We understand business and developers, they bring revenue and they bring attraction to Montgomery County. However, the community, the people, we bring, we bring the money. We bring the votes. We are Montgomery County. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Ms. Dooney? My name is Zoe Dooney. I live in Rockville in District 4. I'm a senior at Walter Johnson High School, and I am asking the County Council to support Bill 1623 and reject Bill 1523. There have been many times in my life where I've been forced to move. I've lived in many different parts of the county throughout my life, so I know firsthand how challenging it is to have to reinvent your life when you have a new home. For anyone in general, it's a new, unsteady adjustment that they have to make. For students, though, it changes everything. You have new teachers, new friends, new neighbors. It creates a whole new routine. And it's not only a change in setting, it's a change in the whole context of our lives. Adults often forget that when our parents move, we move with them. We have to adapt as well. It makes it harder for students to maintain their normal routine, to get work done for school, to spend time with their friends, to find their place. It can be isolating to be in a different place with different people, and that affects every aspect of our lives. Housing instability is a cause of these harsh changes. If you can't afford your own home, then you are inevitably being pushed out of your community. Moving is no longer a choice. It becomes a necessity in order to afford a place to stay. It's a chaotic situation that no one deserves. As I've mentioned, I know the feeling of moving often. I know how hard it is to have to adjust again and again to a new environment. It's an additional toll on our already stressful lives. And if residents are being displaced due to incredibly high rent increases, then students will be forced to bear this weight too. I don't want students to feel the same way that I have. I don't want them to endure an extra burden, the burden of remodeling their lives over something that could easily be fixed by a policy being introduced right now. Students have a right to stable homes just as much as any resident in Montgomery County. This is why I'm asking the County Council to support this policy. I am asking them to be the adults in the room and take care of our MoCo residents. I am asking them to help tenants rather than focus on a mathematical formula for their lives. I am asking them to listen to the countless community members that have already spoken on this issue. I am asking them for stability for students and everyone living in Montgomery County. Please pass the Home Act and reject Bill 1523. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dooney. Ms. Espinoza. Good evening, County Council members. My name is Tracy Espinoza, and I'm a freshman at Watkins Mill High School in District 7. I speak today not just for my friend, but for all of the unheard voices in MCPS who face the effects of unstable housing, such as what Bill 1523 supports. Going to school every day, I didn't think, of what, I didn't think about what might have been going or, around in my classmates' lives, but they too have faced difficulties, just like any other adult in this room. And constantly having to move from one city to another was one of them. A specific, a specific classmate of mine didn't have to move not one time, not two, but ten times, all because, her, all because the rent increase each month was unsustainable. Having only to rely on her working single mother and her baby sister, the built-up consequences of not knowing whether or not there'll be a place to call home the next month, let alone the next week, 
or whether or not they'd have enough money to buy food the or whether or not they'd have enough money to buy food because they've already spent it all on paying rent slowly ate her alive it not only made her sacrifice her social life but her mental health too she became less outgoing forcing herself to isolate and stopped trying to speak out she no longer even wanted to try to make friends because there was always a reminder in the back of her mind telling her not to get attached because she knows she'll eventually have to move again and break all of those built bonds. Now, she lives in fear wondering if this will remain constant enough for her baby sister to reach the age where she'll start developing the unsupportable lifestyle that is of a renter. But the Home Act could change this. By capping rent increases to 3%, it not only gives renters and their children a place to call home, but also security. It ensures that students and workers will not have to sacrifice themselves for a basic right. 8% plus CPI will not just take away from what could be used for basic necessities, but also allows this cycle of instability to be perpetrated with no stop. It's absurd that as I speak, I should be studying for exams, yet I'm here as a 14 year old fighting for my classmates' rights to stable housing because I can no longer stay on the side and watch them have to sacrifice everything they and their parents have worked for, all because bills such as Bill 1523 promote overwhelming rent increases. This is just one voice out of the countless voices in MCPS that deserve to be heard and that deserve a safe home. I don't ask for stable housing to be attainable next year or in a couple of months. I ask for this right everyone deserves to be given now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mott. Yeah. I just want to turn on your microphone. What's that? Turn on your microphone, please. There you go. Oh, I do that? Very cool. You did it well. I like that. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I want to just say first I'm very humbled by everybody who has spoken before me. Uh, it is, it is really, uh, the, these are not just anecdotes that you're hearing, this is life that you're hearing. My name is David Mott, I'm testifying tonight on behalf of the Maryland Poor People's Campaign in Montgomery County. As part of our work to end poverty in Maryland, we believe safe, decent, and affordable housing is a human right. That is why we support passage of Home Bill Act, Act uh, the Home Act Bill 1623 and oppose the passage of Bill 1523. We have a lack of affordable housing crisis here. In Maryland, a family of four needs over $100,000 to have a comfortable living and basic economic security according to the MIT living wage model. The minimum wage here is $15 per hour, only several thousand dollars above the official poverty line. In Montgomery County, evictions have skyrocketed and nearly one half of all renters are severely rent burdened. Simply put, workers' wages have not kept pace with the increased housing costs. The reality for renters here is a brutal and unrelenting equation. The pay is too low and the rent is too damn high. These are serious times. Working people need serious people committed to fighting for serious solutions to the challenges that they face. 1623, the Home Act, is that. It's a measured and responsible approach to corralling ruinous increases in rental costs. Capping rent increases at 3% a year, the Home Act provides for modest and manageable rent increases and seeks to strike a balance, a balance between the needs of renters and landlords. It provides predictability and stability for both parties. Even rent increases, however, of 3% per year, as you have heard tonight, will cause hardship for many renters. The use of public money towards rent subsidies under the Home Act will be a responsible and effective use of taxpayers' dollars, as they will be better targeted uh, to the truly needy and will reach more people and do the most good. That is not the case with the so-called anti-rent gouging bill 1523. This is not a renter protection bill. Instead, this bill is a bill that permits rent gouging under the cover of law. By allowing 8% rent increases plus the rate of inflation, 1523 would allow rent increases today of 14 to 15%, giving landlords legal permission to gouge rents to maximize their profits at the expense, expense of already cost burdened county citizens. Let's be clear 1523 is a prescription 
for eviction. That's what it is. And it is a taxpayer subsidized windfall profits for landlords. To add insult to injury, the proponents of 1523 proposed spending $30 million on rent subsidies, subsidies to backfill the difference between rent gouging allowed under their bill and renters' ability to pay. This is an irresponsible abuse of taxpayers' money. Mr. In short, 1523 seeks to inflict on renters rent increases no reasonable person would find necessary or fair. Thank, and then use you, tax Mark. dollars to ensure landlords get every penny of their legally permitted windfall profits. Thank, thank I'll you, just close Mr. With this. Mr. Mott. I'll just close with this. We are in serious times, and working people need serious solutions and challenges they face. Playing games with workers' lives is wrong. They deserve better from you. Thank you, Mr. Mott. Thank you all. <laughs> to our students, thank you all for being here. Good job. Next, I'd like to call up Max Sokol, Michael Rubin, Emmanuel Walker, Andrew Rawlings, and Maria Enriquez. Okay, uh, Mr. Sokol, you have three minutes. Good evening, thank you for having me this evening. I am here on behalf of Progressive Maryland. I'm very proud to represent our more nearly 10,000 members and supporters right here in Montgomery County. Uh, I wanna start with a Yiddish joke since we've been here a while this evening. Two guys are walking down the street and it starts to rain. The first guy turns to the second guy and says, get out your umbrella. The second guy says, it's not gonna do any good, it's full of holes. The first guy says, well, why'd you bring it? The second guy says, I didn't think it was gonna rain. <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna give some fact checks tonight to uh, the council um, because you've heard a lot of misleading statements. Here are a few of them. One is you've been told that St. Paul repealed rent stabilization, that's false. All St. Paul did was amend rent stabilization to look exactly like the Home Act looks here. We are actually ahead of St. Paul, and we've got a better bill. We've got the bill they've got now. You were told that only unregulated rents can spur development. Look around. We live in an unregulated rental market. Do you feel confident that our housing stock is what it should be? I don't. Unregulated rents don't spur development. There's no causal link here between rent stabilization and a lack of housing development. There are just as many studies that demonstrate no causal connection between stabilization and rates of development, including one study of more than 200 US metro areas. You were told by disbarred attorney Dean Hunter that the Home Act will oppress people who rent a single unit, yet the Home Act explicitly carves out people who live in one unit and rent the other one. You were told that the solution to astronomical rent increases is more rental assistance, but folks, more rental assistance is not coming. It's not in the legislature's budget. It's not in the government, go, governor's supplemental budget. It doesn't exist. The arguments against the Home Act and in favor of rent gouging, they just don't hold water. The fact that proponents of rent gouging have to make so much stuff up speaks volumes about how thin their case is. Here's a little more data for you. More than 100,000 Maryland households are behind on rent. Thousands of those folks live in Montgomery County, and according to census data, 90% of households facing imminent eviction have children in the home. Please don't hand us an umbrella that is full of holes and ask us to make believe we are not soaked. Please don't conduct a mass economic experiment on our community where only tenants will pay the price on the say-so of a handful of landlords and area busybodies. Please. The Home Act is the only bill before you that realistically grapples with our housing crisis. It is flexible. It's a good bill. It deserves your serious consideration. The council's own Office of Legislative Oversight in its racial equity analysis agrees. Our organization considers this the most important vote that you will take this term. Our organization, the people you see behind me, we will hold each of you accountable for how you vote on this bill. Let's do better than jokes for Montgomery County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sokol. Mr. Rubin. Good evening, members of the County Council, Council staff, and fellow residents. 
My name is Michael Rubin, and I'm privileged to serve as the Interim Executive Director at Impact Silver Spring, an organization that's a proud member of the Moore Network, the Montgomery Racial Equity Network, and its fiscal sponsor. Impact's focus is to engage residents in efforts to help us achieve a more racially and economically equitable Montgomery County. Our network of individuals and families continue to struggle with the ongoing effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I've heard so many heartbreaking stories of people who have fallen dramatically behind in their rent, as well as many who kept their rent current but needed to forego spending on food or medication to do so. We have a widening racial wealth gap in our nation and in our county, which is exacerbated by rents that increase at a pace that far outpays wages for so many. You have two bills before you that ostensibly will help stabilize these rising rents. Let me suggest that one of these bills, the Home Act, Bill 1623, actually does so by limiting rent increases to 3% annually. The other bill, 1523, the so-called anti-rent gouging bill, allows for double-digit rent increases in these inflationary times. I know that at impact, we struggle to provide annual salary increases of 3 to 4%. There is no way our staff who are renters could afford a rent increase this year of 10, 12, or great 12% or greater as you know, allowed by Bill 1523. I'm not suggesting that either bill will solve the racial wealth gap crisis, but the Home Act will slow the bleeding, while the anti-rent gouging bill will dramatically worsen the crisis. Montgomery County's Racial Equity and Social Justice Act demands that we pay attention to the racial equity and social justice impacts of bills that come before this body. It is very clear to me that the Home Act will do substantially less harm from a racial equity perspective than the anti-rent gouging bill. You have an obligation to look at both of these bills through a racial equity and social justice lens. One of them, the Home Act, can survive such scrutiny, while the other, the anti-rent gouging bill, fails miserably. I am actually fairly shocked by the number of co-sponsors on Bill 1523. The racial equity and social justice impact assessments for these two bills that were just released yesterday also support my position. The OLO finds that the positive racial equity and social justice impact of Bill 1523 will be small, with no provisions to deal with tenant displacement. The OLO assessment for the Home Act, Bill 1623, finds that it will have a positive racial equity and social justice impact that is moderate to large. In addition, Bill 1623 has revenue generation for affordable housing and provisions to counter tenant displacement. This is a case where doing the right thing, complying with the Racial Equity and Social Justice Act, and actually helping those who are struggling with rapidly increasing rents means simply passing the Home Act with a 3% cap on rent increases and with no weakening amendments. Please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Emmanuel Walker. Is Emmanuel Walker here? Okay. Uh, Mr. Rawlings. Good evening, uh, fellow residents of Montgomery County and the County Council. I'm Andrew Rawlings, resident of Silver Spring, here to speak in opposition to Bill 1623, the Home Act. If enacted, these would uh, so reduce the housing available to rent in the county and severely distort the housing market in the long term. How can I be so certain? Rent controls have been tried in many places and in many times. The evidence is clear. The more severe they are, the worse they impact housing supply and reduce housing quality. Let's get into some specifics. First, I refer to a study by economist Kenneth Rosen, The Effect of Rent Control on New Housing Supply, a Bay Area case study. They use statistical analysis to show that new construction was reduced by rent controls in Berkeley that had particularly severe controls compared to similar areas without them. The report cited other studies that showed that rent control strongly in incentivized conversion to properties for other uses, including condos, and created an incentive for less maintenance in rent-controlled buildings. Second, let's take an example closer to home. Tacoma, Mar Tacoma Park, Maryland has had rent control since 1981. A report cited that no new multifamily buildings have been constructed in Tacoma Park since the 1970s. Several multifamily buildings, however, have been constructed or a plan just outside of city limits. This aligns with the 1981 passage of citywide rent controls. Reporting on MontgomeryPerspective.com cites that 15% of units were taken off the rental market and converted to condos. Bill 1623 in some ways is actually more severe than the current Tacoma Park rent controls, it, which uh, limits uh, uh, rent to an increase of 3% or CPI, whereas uh, Tacoma Park's rules, I believe, are just uh, CPI. Um, finally, uh, I want to broaden this out a bit. 
the U.S. overall has a huge debt of housing supply, and we need millions of new units nationwide. A housing economist, Mark Fleming, said it very well. The best housing affordability policy is build more homes, any homes, at any level policy. We can't solve the nation's problems here. However, let's emphatically say no to this rent control and get, on, get to work on ways that make it easier to build housing where people want to live in Montgomery County. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rawlings. Uh, and now uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Maria Enriquez. Buenas noches, damas y caballeros de consejo. Eh, mi nombre es María Enriquez. Tengo tres décadas de vivir en mi condado de Montgomery. <laughs> eh, Good evening. My name is Maria Enriquez. I am a proud immigrant from Mexico and proud Montgomery County resident that has spent the last 30 years calling this place home. Estoy aquí esta noche para expresar mi apoyo al acta, al Home Acta, una política significativa de estabilización de alquiler que evitará a la comunidad como la mía ser desplazada y desalojada de su hogar. I am here this evening to voice my support for the Home Act, a meaningful rent stabilization policy that will keep communities like mine from being displaced. Hay, hay, hay algún que muchos inmigrantes de las comunidades de color aquí en esta noche me resulta extremadamente difícil encontrar una vivienda segura y estable. Like many immigrants and communities of colors here this evening, I find it extremely difficult to find safe and stable housing. En resumen, nuestra comunidad ya no puede prosperar en el, con, en el condado. Our communities can no longer thrive in the county. Lo que han logrado vivir aquí en más de un año apenas sobreviven. The ones who have managed to live here another year are barely surviving. Estoy increíblemente decepcionada por los seis patrocinadores de la, que apoyan la ley 1523. Sin embargo, estoy muy decepcionada con algunos de ustedes con quienes he tenido la oportunidad de hablar con ustedes y pedir un apoyo. I am incredible, incredibly disappointed by the six bill sponsors of Bill 1523. However, I am most disappointed with a few of you with whom I have had the opportunity to have conversations regarding the need of, for a meaningful rent stabilization policy. Específicamente, ustedes seis simplemente juzgan a los que creen que funcionarios mejor que nuestra comunidad sin prote protestar significativamente de las comunidades de lo que enfrentaría más diferente principalmente en los alquilinos de inmigrantes y de color. Essentially, you six just put together what you believe will work best for our community without meaningful input from the communities it will most directly affect, mainly black and brown renters. Para crear verdaderamente, verdaderamente políticas que promuevan la equidad de la justicia, es fundamental practicar, participar en los alcances, colaboraciones, comunitarios significativos, particularmente como aquellos que han sido históricos manif manifestados. To truly create policies that promote equity and justice, it is critical to engage in meaningful community outreach and collaboration, particularly with those who have been historically marginalized. Si realmente escucharan y tuvieran la más mínima idea de lo que está sucediendo en nuestro terreno, no habría forma de que pudieran avanzar con un proyecto de ley incompleto, ineficaz y dañino. 
If you truly listened and had the slightest idea of what was happening on the ground, there will be no way you could have moved forward with such an incomplete, ineffective, and harmful bill. Los insectos a que retiren el proyecto de ley 1523 y en su lugar trabajen junto con Home Acta para encontrar pun puntos en con la comunidad brinda previsibilidad, estabilidad, todos los residentes. I urge you to withdraw Bill 1523 and instead work together on the Home Act to find common ground to bring predictability and stability to all residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony. <laughs> Next, I'd like to call up Magnus Fortune Sutton, Rafi Glazier, Carrie Mills, Rob Bindeman and Michael DeLong. Mr. Fortune Sutter. Good news to you, Montgomery County Council members. I want to give honor to my God, and I come in the name of Jesus. My name is Magnus Fortune Sutton, and I'm testifying because I want grants to bless for me and my family through the Home Act right now. I live with my sister, and I am currently unemployed. I get jobs here and there, but I'm unable to contribute to my rent. Since I do not have a green card, I cannot get all the jobs that are offered to me. Since I, um, but once I get it, I can I can contribute. But even with the current event, it's not like I can make a dent. My sister got into an accident about two years ago, and has had two sur two surgeries, two neck surgeries. So she also does not work full time. It is very difficult to keep the apartment due to both our struggles. Things have gotten so much worse after COVID. Everyone is struggling. I started living with my sister back in 2020, and the rent then was $1,500. Now it is $1,900, which is a latest increase of 7.8%. I'm going to pause for a second. 7.8% increase. That's a lot. Which means I, cannot, I will not be covered by Bill 15-23. How am I supposed to build a life if I'm living day to day, to day not knowing if I will have a home next day. I am in the library every day because I cannot afford my, my cable bill and internet. No matter what library I go to, Bethesda, Gettysburg, Davis, Rockville, Espinel, or anywhere else, I see people doing the same thing. People come in with a suitcase and toothbrush they, because they do not know where they will sleep at night. It is clear we are all struggling. How is this acceptable? We need rent stabilization to survive. I need rent stabilization to survive. Or else we will have more homeless people or we will have to go to other cities or states. We have to re relocate my sister and myself because we cannot afford to stay where we are right now. If we get evicted, we do not know where we'll go. It is a lot to handle. It is by the grace of God that I am all right today and I'm fortunate that we have the Montgomery County Library that we could go to daily. This process feels like a cycle. Tenants come to a building to live a life in Montgomery County. Landlord increases the, the um, prices out of nowhere. We have to leave and go to another building. The rents go up, we leave, and it keeps going and going up. I'm 46 years old. Under the old max, I will be able to stay in one place and thrive. It would be life be a life changer for me. For me. On the bill 15-23, I will be in the same horrible situation that I'm in right now. I thank God. I thank all you council members for supporting and passing the Home Act care, the Home Act bill, as soon as, as soon as possible to give people like me the opportunity to succeed. So God bless you guys. I love you guys, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Mr. Glazer. Hi, my name is Rafi Glazer, and I'm a resident of Aspen Hill in District 6. On, on behalf of Jews United for Justice, I'm submitting this testimony in support of the Home Act, Bill 1623, opposition to the anti-rent gouging Bill 1523. JUFJ organizes over 2,000 Jews and allies from across Montgomery County who act on our shared values to advance social and economic justice, racial equity, in our local community. I'm testifying because I believe that all of our neighbors across race, class, and zip code deserve the chance to put down roots in our communities. I'm asking the County Council to pass rent stabilization with a cap of no higher than 3% to ensure just that. Fast approaching is the Jewish holiday of Passover, which celebrates the Israelites' escape from slavery. Our sacred texts, texts insist that we turn this experience into compassion for the most vulnerable in our communities today. In fact, one of the most repeated commandments in all of Torah is to protect the widow, orphan, and stranger because we were once strangers. As a registered resource parent or foster parent, I've opened my home to many of those most vulnerable, and it breaks my heart that some children would be with their biological families if unsustainably high annual rent increases and not place their families into unstable housing. In the three years that I've been a foster parent, I've had the privilege of caring for 11 children from three days old to 16 years old. Many of them do not share their whole life stories, but when we drive around the county and a child points their finger at multiple houses and says, I used to live there, tells them their families have not had stable housing. Another foster parent told me about a biological father who had to take a job in Pennsylvania because he could not afford rent in our county. As a result, he had to drive two hours each way just to see his children, which made it hard for him to make home visits. This in turn made reunification, a key goal of foster care, take much longer than it should have. He was kept away from his children because, for him and many others, rent is too high to live in this county. Whereas the Home Act would curb the county housing crisis, the anti-rent gouging bill would result in the displacement of our most vulnerable families. We need to do everything we can to make living in this wonderful county an option for everyone. I'm doing my part as a foster parent to care for the children impacted by so many failures in our systems, including the crisis of housing instability. It's time for the council to do your part to ensure no child is separated from their parents because of our county's inadequate protections for renters. I urge the council to support Bill 1623 and oppose Bill 1523. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blazer. Ms. Mills. My name is Carrie Mills. I'm a tenant at Maven at Wheaton, previously known as Solaire Wheaton, located at 10914 Georgia Avenue. I'm the organizer behind our tenants union, and I'm here in favor of the Home Act. Last November, we received notice that our Bethesda-based landlord, who spoke earlier tonight, intended to sell the building. Within weeks, elevators went down more frequently and for longer periods, maintenance ticket times doubled, and staff dwindled. In December, I began collecting signatures to exercise our right of first refusal. In less than three weeks, we achieved the unthinkable. We exceeded the minimum number of signatures needed to submit our certification request. All the while, management repeatedly locked us out of meeting rooms, constantly tore down our signs, and banned us from knocking on doors. Meanwhile, DHCA, failed to respond to our emails and offered no assistance to end management's ongoing harassment. Despite all this, DHCA authenticated signatures for more than 30% of occupied units and still the county denied our certification. Our certification efforts were intended to expose predatory behavior by unlocking the documentation behind the sale. Many residents reported that management issued base rent renewal increases of 20 to 40%. We uncovered a pattern of discrimination in those rates, disproportionately impacting black women under the age of 45 and single mothers. Older tenants stated management offered voluntary reductions to their initial renewal offers before they, because they were deemed one of the good ones. The Office of Human Rights rejected our discrimination intake, informing us they only handle individual cases. Our own council member repeatedly ignored us and now proposes the anti-rent gouging bill that would condemn us to similarly high rent increases in the future. Mm -hmm. Montgomery County has failed our community time and again, a community that reflects Wheaton's racial and ethnic diversity. Current legislation does not protect us. Management was free to jack up our rents, trample our rights, undermine our organizing efforts, and walk away unscathed at the end of the sale. I ask that you pass the HOME Act, that you give tenants a chance to stay in their homes, to stay in this county, without being de facto evicted by outrageous rent increases. Further, a flat 3% increase will reduce cases of discrimination that persist despite federal legislation. This is not a hypothetical, this is our reality today. New management is upholding these extreme rent increases, continuing the legacy of tenant displacement. 
The fate of this bill dictates who will live in this county and what kind of comfort and financial security they are entitled to. Our neighbors are leaving, our community crumbling, and we are left defenseless. Let the HOME Act be the start of a new era where we value people over profits and we stop predatory patterns for good. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mills. Mr. Bindeman. Good evening. Uh, my late father told me a long time ago, and, and you knew him, Mr. Katz, that no one's ever going to feel sorry for a landlord. And before there's big reaction to my words tonight, I just want to say to the audience, I showed up. I didn't hide behind Zoom. I get all the emotion in the room and, you know, all the testimony before me. And that's why I think I'm one of the best moderately priced landlords in all of Montgomery County. It's why I chair a charity that focuses on housing for special needs. I'm Rob Bindeman, president of Landmark Realty, a fourth generation multifamily provider who was born, raised, and lives in Montgomery County. We all agree that the people of Montgomery County deserve to live in apartments that are safe, clean, and most importantly, are apartments they can afford. But here's the deal, rent control doesn't work. It hasn't worked since the 70s, and it won't work now. And to even be discussing 3% increases as a solution to a housing shortage is totally backwards. Yet here we are, 50 years after DC enacted rent control, talking about an even stricter policy. Where has it worked? Tacoma Park, the home of the county executive? There hasn't been a new building in Tacoma Park since Nixon was in office. There are less renters today in Tacoma Park than just 10 years ago. It's a shrinking population. Was 2021 an outlier where rents increased 9, 10%? Of course it was. We all know that was tied to the pandemic where rents were frozen for two years. Are there bad actors out there jacking rents 20, 25%? That seems to be the case. And if you want to prevent that, I'm first in line to support you. But from a macro standpoint, 3% increases will be crushing for the county's economy. Try telling a lender or your investors that rents are only going up 3%, along with all the costs that we face. And then the craziest part is that we're focusing on the NOAA housing, the older buildings, and I've got them, that rely on rents and, and to pay for or refinance new boilers, new roofs, and the sprinkler systems that you just legislated for. You can't have it both ways. It's not just about affordable housing, folks. It's about safe, affordable housing. When I list an apartment, the renters determine how much the rent will be. Elected officials' job, Mr. Jawando, is to dictate how much housing there is. Let's not creep into each other's lanes. Stop the rent gouging but focus your legislation on tools to develop more supply, not penalize the landlords and the developers who are getting the job done safely for the residents of our county. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Binderman. Uh, Mr. DeLong. Uh, President Glass, members of the County Council, uh, thank you for getting, hearing our testimony. My name is Michael DeLong, and I'm the president of the Montgomery County Young Democrats. Uh, we're a bunch of young Democrats, ages 14 to 34, uh, working to make Montgomery County and Maryland better places to live, elect Democrats, and get more young people involved in politics. We strongly support uh, Bill 1623, the Home Act. Uh, this bill it would limit rent increases to match the voluntary rent guidelines, or to 3% annually and it would bring rent stabilization to our county along with stability and predictability for our most vulnerable residents, including a lot of our members. Uh, you've heard a lot of points tonight, so I just wanted to quickly go over some and share some of our experiences. Montgomery County, we're currently facing a housing crisis, and we young Democrats uh, are familiar with that. We and a lot of other residents, we often struggle to find affordable housing. Uh, renters make up 37% of the county's residents. Uh, we already pay a higher percentages of our income on housing than homeowners, and I refer to that as we because although I am recently bought a home, I was a renter for uh, many years, and Montgomery County, the market was quite difficult, so I actually had to live in a basement, which may or may not have been technically legal, but I was fortunately one of the lucky ones. And a lot of uh, our county residents are reporting uh, rent increases. 
The Washington Post said that average rent increases have gone up by 8.3%. But some of our members, and uh, we've been hearing anecdotes of uh, rent increases that are 10%, uh, 20%, even higher hikes. A lot of people are cost burdened, so they have to live either outside the county or struggle to afford housing. They have to pay a lot of their income on rent. Uh, teachers in our public schools can't afford to live here, and they have to commute from other areas. Uh, people struggling to afford rent, they often have to choose between that and paying for um, uh, food, uh, clothing, health care, and other things. And this bill, uh, rent stabilization, it's going to make the rent amounts and increases predictable. It'll allow both tenants and landlords to plan for the future. And so by passing this bill, the county council, uh, you can help uh, alleviate our housing crisis and make things better for nearly everyone. Um, and it's also going to establish a new source of income for Montgomery County to build more affordable housing. We need more housing, but we also need more affordable housing, mm -hmm. and the vacancy tax is a really good tool. And just a few final things. Housing is a human right, and we Montgomery County Democrats, since we're uh, young and uh, in the early part stages of our careers, were disproportionately impacted by a high housing and especially high rent. And this unaffordable housing affects us. This bill is going to ensure that renters are protected against unjust and excessive rent increases. It'll ensure that more people have access to affordable housing. It'll reduce evictions, which are traumatic. So we urge the council to pass this bill. And uh, two final things in response to my panelists. One, emotion isn't always bad. Emotion can be uh, can make people have bad decisions, but it can also spur people to act for justice. And if the office only handles individual complaints, that's a stupid and terrible policy, and they should change it immediately. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you very much. Um, our last in-person panel will be uh, the next six individuals. Uh, Se Anika Aka, Amazu Abaganal, I apologize, uh, Michael Bobogakin, Bodakin, uh, Brandy Brooks, Jessica Guerrero, and Marie Nuko. Say Anika Aka. Good evening, council members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Anika. I represent the Francophone Africans Alliance. Um, Francophone from French speaking countries in Africa. We are here tonight to support the Home Act. Our work with the Francophone African community and the immigrant community at large has allowed us to witness firsthand the struggle of our community to keep a roof over their heads. Immigrants are the most vulnerable group when it comes to housing because of the challenges they face finding safe, decent, and affordable housing. Families in the African immigrant community typically spend half or even more than half their income to pay the rent, resulting in people working two, three times two or three sometimes more jobs with a catastrophic impact on their families' lives and more importantly on their children. Indeed, the burnout experienced by the parents negatively as affects the children's mental health and outcome in life. We have seen a surge of families from all walks of life facing eviction, just like I have permission to mention their name. Danielle Aou is a 26 years old young lady from the Francophone African community. Uh, Eva, a single mom of two, and Mr. Valerie Nembo, who was forced to leave Montgomery County and find refuge in PG County. And the list goes on. The threat of displacement and homelessness of immigrant families is real and deeply troublesome. We support the Home Act and the 3% increase limit in rents. African immigrant families need predictability and stability. Having stable and predictable housing is a human rights issue. 
we urge the county council to not turn a blind eye eye on this pressing human rights issue developing right here in our backyard. We urge the county council to do the right thing, to do the humane thing and pass the Home Act for the stability of all Montgomery County families and also for a stronger and safer Montgomery County. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Coach should have just brought you down with that. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, dear council member. Uh, thank you also to give me the opportunity to he be here tonight. Uh, what I'm coming to say tonight is my own story. I will always know everyone sitting down over there, but you guys don't know my story. And I came tonight because my story relates to so many million people because I live in an apartment. In three years, my rent moved from 1700 to 2500 mm. I'm a school teacher in Piggy County, paraprofessional. I serve a thousand plus family in the East County. And every single day, I had to put a smile on my face to serve those family. Because a little four, five years old is looking after you, say coach, for any question. But I, what I'm here tonight is say, you all will know what we are facing. We need to act to pass the home mark bill in favor of the caller and the people who live, especially in the East County, who are served. The landlord know where we're coming from. They know we don't have nobody, and they treat us like a shit. When your anything broke on your apartment, you call no one, not listen to you. We live with the righteous. We live with the mouse. We live with the anything. Even yesterday, there was a shooting in my apartment. Those things we face every single day, but we call ourselves to live in Montgomery County, and we're gonna raise a child. We're gonna raise a youth who tomorrow belong to. So I believe this is your time act and do something before tomorrow we turn something. We don't want to live in the California. This is Montgomery County. A place everyone want to live. That's a slogan. Everywhere I, I go to any meeting, that's a, a sing people song. Montgomery County. A place we want to live. But today it become a disaster. Sometimes I don't sleep at night because the rent you gotta gather everything together to pay in the next month. I have a child is in the college. Out of 1,800 who come to my pocket every month to make sure he's living in the dorm and eat, plus almost what I bring to my house, it does not equivalent to what I'm paying to the landlord and the living and then see you guys and have a smile in my faces and live decently in this Montgomery County. So I believe something needs to be done. It's not for me. But if for so many, I see myself and every single person who come from somewhere to have a refuge here in Montgomery County. Please do something to protect those who don't have anybody. Please pass the home bill. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Verdaken. Good evening. Uh, you know, I was going to say something else tonight. I'm going to go off track a little bit. You know, you've heard a lot tonight. My name is Michael Bodak, and I've uh, been a mem member of, uh, I've been living here for over 30 years. Before I was here, I was the deputy mayor for Los Angeles under Mayor Tom Bradley, and we had a rent stabilization ordinance, not unlike the one that you're listening, uh, considering tonight. And I've given you some testimony. Um, I also led the National Housing Trust and we developed over 3,000 apartments up and down the East Coast in Chicago, including in Washington, D.C. and Montgomery County. And I serve currently as an adjunct public policy professor at Maryland. And the reason I'm going to go off script is I was so struck by two points that were made earlier tonight by, I think it was Max and Zoe. If you remember what Max said, Max said, you're hearing all these things and they're not true. There are all these people coming up with this parade of horribles, that things are going to co collapse if you pass 
1623. And um, you're hearing that St. Paul uh, repealed uh, rent control. It's not true. Of course, he, Max was totally right. Um, you know, listening to, to Tacoma Park strikes me as uh, totally irrelevant. You have a county that's 500 square miles and over a million people. I don't think Tacoma Park is the right proxy for what you should consider as precedent. I mean, it seems to me you should be looking at places like Los Angeles, California, places like New Jersey, California, Oregon, where study after study after study have demonstrated that, in fact, there is no disinvestment in real estate. Now, you can say, well, there are studies, and that's quite right, there are studies that, in fact, say the opposite. But none of those studies show, as they did in California, longitudinally, when, when rent control was adopted in six cities in California, larger cities, prosperous cities, the real estate activity actually went up because new construction was wisely exempted. So I don't believe you should be trapped into that. The second point is stability. That was the point that Zoe was making. That was the point Tiffany was making. What do we know about stability in our society? We know stability matters. Stability for home ownership. That's what people care about. The same is true of people who rent. Study after study after study. You have a 48-page study from the AOBA, not one mention of the social benefit and the economic benefit to the residents of, these, of this county from rent stabilization. We know that frequent moves hurt educational outcomes. We know that frequent moves hurt health. We know that frequent moves lead to unemployment consequences. The county will be better served with a stable ordinance with a pass-through for reasonable profit. And that's what uh, 1623 does. I urge you to adopt it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brooks. Council President Glass, Vice President Friedson, and members of the County Council. My name is Brandy Brooks, and I'm a racial and environmental justice organizer living in Kensington. And I'm here to testify strongly in favor of Bill 1623, the Home Act. My full written testimony is in your packet. I rent my home in Kensington, and my mother Carol, whom almost all of you have met, also rents her home in Aspen Hill. Both of us are in Councilmember Fanny Gonzalez's district. My mother has given me permission to share with you some of the details of her story as a renter in this county. My mother is a senior and has a disability. She currently lives on her social security income of $2,300 a month. My mother's rent on her one bedroom unit is $1,400 a month. Including the cost of utilities for my mother's home, her total monthly housing cost is 68% of her income. After my mother pays for essential expenses like her health and car insurance, she is left with a little over $100 with which to buy groceries, pay for her prescriptions, buy gas or do anything else. We work together as a family to make sure that my mother's basic expenses, which average about $700 beyond her base income, are covered every month. Despite all of this, my mother is actually fortunate. Her monthly Social Security payment is $500 above the average monthly payment of $1,830 for a retired worker in the United States. She also lives in what people sometimes call naturally occurring affordable housing. Her rent is more than $200 below the fair market rent of $1,640 for a one-bedroom apartment in her zip code. Interestingly enough, my mother's monthly income is only about $100 below that of a full-time worker earning Montgomery County's minimum wage of $15 an hour. That worker would earn about $31,000 per year. For reference, you all as council members deciding what qualifies as an affordable rental increase earn five times that worker's wage. I remind you of all these numbers so that today's conversation is based in facts, not fantasy. The 3% maximum annual rent increase allowed by the HOME Act would reduce my mother's cost burden. In contrast, the 8% plus CPI cap set by Bill 1523, which legitimizes the rent gouging already being faced by many renters in our county, would allow her rent to go up by more than $200 a year. It would be laughable to talk about Bill 1523 as an alternative to the HOME Act, except that the consequences are not a joke for our neighbors. 
These rent increases are not numbers in some accountant's spreadsheet, and they are not some stories. They are the difference between medical care or not, between heat or not, between food or not. Each of you has repeatedly said that you are committed to racial equity and social justice, but the truth of that commitment is going to be shown in what you do with the power that we have entrusted to you. Listen to the people you say you are trying to help and pass Bill 1623. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Ms. Guerrero. There you go. Dear Council, my name is Jessica Guerrero. I am a Montgomery County resident and a mother of two boys, six-year-old and a nine-month-old baby. I, res I resided in the Rock Creek Wood Apartments in Rockville. And if the complex sounds familiar, it was the site of a flash flood that displaced 150 tenants and claimed the life of a young man who saved his mother from certain death. Aside from the tragic flood incident that had multiple warning signs, my family and I, along with my fellow neighbors, had been subject to deplorable conditions but this is nothing new. These are ongoing maintenance issues that tenants have long been fighting well before the pandemic. These issues include mold, mice and cockroach infestation, plumbing issues, and much more. Too often, our concerns went unheard, leaving many, many of us to accept living in these hazardous health conditions. Many of us, including my family, have children with asthma who cannot be subjected to dangerous health conditions. But with soaring rental prices and minimal affording housing, most black and brown communities like mine have no choice but to stay, leaving our fate in the hands of our landlords. The worst part was that our landlord was raising our rent by an average of four to seven percent. We were paying nearly $2,000 a month just to live in these deplorable conditions. That is not just. Leaving tonight, my son wanted to be here with me but he told me, let them know that we are strong. I have been strong through the mold. I have been strong through the plumbing issues. I have been strong through the roach infestation. I have been strong through the dozens of mice in our home. I have been strong while speaking up against these, con these conditions. I have been strong through the retaliation from our landlord for speaking up against these conditions. I have been strong knowing that our rent is just too damn high. I am writing to say that black and brown communities like mine deserve better. Immigrant communities deserve better. Families deserve better. And above all else, our children deserve better. The county must stop failing its residents when they need the government the most. I stand with hundreds of renters who say the time is long overdue for permanent rent stabilization. I urge all of you to support Bill 1623. The bill is reasonable and will bring much needed relief and stability to many families. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and off our final in-person speaker is Ms. Nueco. Dear Montgomery County Council, good evening. My name is Marie Solange Nueco. Uh, I live in Montgomery County. I'm a mom of three daughters. I work like uh, direct support with uh, community option in Rockville. Uh, I'm here to ask for your support of rent stabilization 1623. Then I need to know that if their rent increase, it will be by a reasonable amount of money, no more than 3% of their current rent for the next 12 months. For me, rent stabilization contributes to the improvement of living condition because we can plan our expenses in advance, which will certainly save us from certain ailments caused by stress. I live in my apartment and I was paying uh, $1,700. I received a notification at the end of uh, 2022 uh, that my rent went to twenty uh, twenty hundred uh, dollars. 
at the beginning of this year without having a stable income. As I say, I'm part-time uh, worker. My children are not with me in addition. They lost their dad in September 2022. How am, am I going to pay for their schooling with my modest income? Since the beginning of the year, some members of my family helped to pay for their food, clothes, and health problem. How long will they do it? I don't know. When tenants are forced to leave because of excessive rent increase, it hurts not just that particular tenant, but all of us. Schools are destabilized when families are forced to move. Jobs are, lo jobs are lost when tenants move far away to afford the rent. As a resident of Montgomery County, I believe that it is critical that we put people first. I am asking for a yes, please, vote on the home ACT Bill 1623. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your testimony this evening. We now have five more folks who are joining us virtually. I'd like to invite Dan Reed. All right. Um, good evening. I'm going to keep this short because it's late. And I know you all want to go to bed. I certainly do. My name is Dan Reed. I serve as the Regional Policy Director for Greater Greater Washington. We're a nonprofit that works to advance uh, racial, economic, and environmental justice and land use transportation and housing throughout Greater Washington. We believe that rent stabilization is an important near-term solution to prevent displacement, but it's not an affordable housing solution on its own. Um, you know, both of these bills have a lot to offer. Uh, we recognize that with six co-sponsors for Bill 1623, it, it does seem like the council's choice is not between these two bills, but frankly, having rent stabilization or having no rent stabilization. We anticipate that the council is going to broker some kind of compromise in the next couple of months, and we think that's a good thing. Uh, and we encourage the council to look at what other communities around the country have done in terms of rent stabilization as well. There are a lot of really good examples out there. And that's why the Urban Institute identifies rent stabilization as an effective anti-displacement measure. Large dramatic rent increases can push residents out of their homes, out of their neighborhoods, and out of the county. But if rent stabilization gives tenants the choice to stay in their homes, Increased housing production gives tenants the choice to find a new home when their needs or preferences change without having to leave the people and places that matter to them. In the long term, the county needs more homes, more income restricted homes, more subsidized homes, more market rate homes. We have to build at least 3,200 homes a year over the next 20 years to accommodate our growing population. That's almost twice as many homes we built in 2021. Those are the county's own figures. Another Urban Institute study notes that upzoning, allowing more homes on any given piece of land, can also prevent rent increases while creating new housing options. But it isn't the same as rent control and rent stabilization in terms of keeping rents um, low as opposed to rising them. So we encourage the county council, once amending a rent control bill, to use, do some other things. Increase rental assistance, expand the Housing Opportunity Development Fund, which provides loans for mixed income social housing in the county. It's already happening. Increase support for first time home buyers, such as down payment and closing cost grants. Removing parking requirements for homes near Metro and the Purple Line, because structured parking is expensive and not as many people drive in those communities, so don't need as much parking. Uh, and also, upzoning based on the Attainable Housing Strategies Report, which is waiting for planning board approval. This is a really important tool to provide new housing in areas where you can only build one home per lot today. Um, this issue is personal for me. You know, I've been a tenant myself. In 2019, I received a 30% rent increase for my apartment in Rockville, which forced me to move. As an organization, GG Watch doesn't want that to happen to people, full stop. But neither of these bills are going to relieve the overall burden of housing costs for county residents. And we look forward to working with y'all uh, to craft and implement some policies that will do that. Thanks, and I hope y'all have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Uh, next, uh, Will Roberts. Good evening. Good evening, Council President Glass and Council members. Uh, I'm Will Roberts, the board chair of the Montgomery County Renters Alliance. We're the first and only regional nonprofit dedicated exclusively to renter outreach, education, organizing, and advocacy. Uh, you've heard powerful testimony today and this evening 
from tenants, your constituents sharing their stories before you for hours and imploring you to act in their best interests. Uh, I was a renter for many years all across the county, and so I know that our affordability crisis has been persistent. And we're all here before you tonight because of what's happening in our communities right now. The, the through line that you've heard today is the simple principle that stable, affordable rental housing is critical for community health, welfare, and prosperity. And the skyrocketing rents that we're seeing across the county represent really a, a forced migration of seniors and people with disabilities, folks who are on f fixed incomes, of working people, of working families, of kids in our schools, of you, as you've heard this evening. Uh, and of renters who are predominantly people of color. And so the 11 of you have a real opportunity and responsibility, frankly, uh, before you act, uh, to act in the actual interests of the residents who need the help. Uh, this is an issue that's impacting 40% of county residents, the, our renters, and the policy details do matter here. So as a principle, we believe that a well-designed rent stabilization program must balance the legitimate interests of landlords to maintain their profits and keep up with expenses with the renters important need and right to maintain stable affordable housing now the home act does that it's a balanced approach that seeks to provide renters with uh, th that reasonable and predictable rent while providing landlords the chance of chance to make a decent profit and ensuring that new investment in housing is given enough time uh, to see a reasonable return and it's a bill that's written with the community at the table uh, it won't halt development or collapse the housing market, that's not true. And so I urge you to support this bill. Uh, for those of you currently supporting 1523, the so-called anti-gouging bill, I ask you to think about who's gonna actually be helped under the provisions of that current proposal that permits increases in excess of 14%. You can call it what you wish, but in reality, it codifies a rent gouge and fails to protect thousands of renters. I don't see how that achieves the goal that I know you all share to provide stable, affordable housing for all. Uh, it doesn't meet the county's equity goals as well if we're exposing thousands of renters uh, to that danger of displacement. And so I would hope, you know, that you and your colleagues continue to talk and that you would withdraw 1523 and work with the sponsors of the Home Act if you see chances to improve that bill there. You know, let's not miss this opportunity to pass the best policy that's actually going to improve people's lives and make sure that Montgomery County is the county that we say we are. Let's be as good as we are on paper to the residents that live in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Next, I'd like to invite Victoria Gray. Hello. We see you. Thank you. Buenas noches, and thank you for allowing me to share my first-hand experience as a small landlord grappling with rent control over the last 35 years in both the People's Republic of Santa Monica, California, and the People's Republic of Tacoma Park. It has been time-consuming, excessively costly, and frustrating. It is driving droves of small property owners out of business at a time when large government affordable housing projects don't seem to provide a solution. I am also the daughter of an illegal Mexican immigrant, and my two sisters are both lesbians. I want to let you know that I oppose both bills, and, and like Dan Reed, I encourage the council to expand the current efforts to provide housing assistance. I would like to kindly remind you all that we should stay focused on the objective, which I believe is to help low-income renters afford Montgomery County housing and to keep our county welcoming to people of all backgrounds and income levels. MoCo doesn't have control over the macroeconomic factors that drive the hardships that were shared with us tonight. We have heard tonight from tenant after tenant that the rent is too damn high. My heart goes out to every one of them. How, but how do we best address this? And my answer is by direct financial assistance to rent burdened tenants like Diane Griffin, a supporter of 1523, and also by um, building more affordable housing and not by the creation of an expensive bureaucracy. Rent control is a very blunt instrument because it requires all landlords, whether they can individually afford it or not, to subsidize all tenants, whether they need it or not. I have the data to prove that the benefits of capping all rents would be wasted on at least 50% of renter households who can afford their rent in Montgomery County. What politician would pass a benefit program that is wasted on half the recipients? 
Even worse is the amount of money that it will cost the money to administer this rent control program. I have uploaded a chart that extrapolates the budgets of Santa Monica and Tacoma Park based on population. Rent control is not free and will cost, I estimate, 20 to $30 million annually. Can you imagine how many people could be helped by this amount of money by directly targeted rent vouchers? Rent control is a short-term political solution to a long-term problem that primarily benefits existing tenants, and it hurts prospective tenants because there are no vacancies for them to rent and enjoy the benefit. Rent control is one of the few areas of economics that has almost 100% consensus that it is not an efficient solution, but the short-term political benefits seem too irresistible to politicians, and that's why we have these two different measures. Larry Summers, the economist who served President Obama as Treasury Secretary and went on to become the president of Harvard, said, rent control is the surest way to destroy a city's housing stock. Well, just look at Tacoma Park that hasn't had one increase in net housing in the last 40 years. And Tacoma Park has a very low vacancy rate, and it's one of the lowest. And so a newcomer to get an apartment there is like winning the lottery. Is that what we want to create, but on a large, larger scale? Please ask yourself, is the juice worth the squeeze? And I say the answer is no. Th thank you, Ms. Gray. Next is Daniel Aho. Nope, and they are not there. Uh, last speaker of the evening is Nathania Steinmetz. Nope, and she is not online either. So, um, throughout today, we had nearly 80 people testify on these two pieces of legislation, which is nearly double what we typically hear because we know how important this issue is uh, to residents, to property owners, uh, and to all of you. And so I want to thank you all for coming out this evening. For those of you who have not provided testimony or know others who want to provide testimony, you have until June 8th to provide testimony on either and or both of these pieces of legislation. Individuals can also provide testimony online going to montgomerycountymd.gov slash council slash testify. And with that, this hearing is closed and this meeting is adjourned. Have yourselves a good night. Thank you very much.